ठीक है आफ्टर दैट आई विल स्विच ओवर टू सुमित गोयल साहब देन आई विल सी टू ज्वाइन श्री एस बी मुके साहब एंड देन टू श्री एम जगदीश बाबू एंड देन टू श्री मूर्ति साहब सर सो एन ए बी एम बींग ए प्रीमियर नेशनल इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ ट्रेनिंग इट इज कॉल्ड नेशनल अकेडमी अबाउट कास्टिंग एंड मल्टी मीडिया प्रसार भारती दैट इज कंडक्टिंग ट्रेनिंग फॉर ऑफिसर साहब ए आई आर एंड दूरदर्शन ऑल्सो अदर्स इट इज डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ आई एंड बी लाइक इंफॉर्मेशन फिल्म ब्रॉडकास्टिंग इज ए मेजर डिपार्टमेंट इट इज इलेक्ट्रॉनिक मीडिया एंड इन इलेक्ट्रॉनिक मीडिया ए आई आर दूरदर्शन न्यूज सर्विस डिविजन एंड अदर इज एन ए बी एम we have to maintain some ethics during the training it is for the trainees and all the attendees to maintain peace with minimum noise absolute sincerity and integrity no delay leave absentee time bound action to complete all the task to meet the objectives what objective we have set we have to meet on the time we have also vision mission roles and goals vision we are committed to empower all kind of masses citizens all over the country by assuring safety and security in dissemination of information and program and education and entertainment in mission we have to assure safety and security of the system to uphold and maintain unity and national integrity to develop powerful electronic mass communication medium to broadcast timely updated objective comprehensive balanced news and major events to achieve international standards cooperation and global harmony to promote research and development roles as national public service broadcaster in electronic media goals to achieve well informed educated society to safety and security and we have objectives of the training to update information and knowledge to develop safe and secure environment for trouble free system for development understand and resolve problems issues one by one and in bunch also improve in overall performance in project operation and maintenance deliver high quality service to public for better satisfaction empowerment of employees trainees and the organization to empower the public ultimately to develop a knowledge based society this is the schedule of five days it is started today and main speaker today will be uh, c h a s murthy professor and associate director isca cdec hyderabad and second day desktop security browser security and email security by am nosad m jagdish babu both will take this and uh, on 5th august social engineer techniques professor by b professor valli kumari professor department of cs and sc au college of engineering visakhapatnam and on 6 august social networking and cyber law and it act by e nares and l nirmala on 7th last day mobile and mobile application security by m jagdish babu and l nirmala if anything is left related to this cyber security that will be covered by the isca as discussed evaluation of a training it is very important also because uh, we have to make attendance full 100% uh, otherwise we cannot achieve the training objective punctuality should be full 100% participation in question and discussion is also as required test assessment exercise in the last that will be only one number and uh, training has to uh, secure 50% mark to get the certificate by isca cdec hyderabad and let us protect and develop environment ecosystem and bios here our existence is depend on their existence so environment is very important holy their oxygen dene wale doctor ko hum paise dekar bhagwan mante hain jab ki jeevan bhar mukt mein oxygen dene wale ped ki hum qadar nahi karte so let us promote for plantation works ped bachao जो लगे हैं उनको भी बचाना है वार्स ऑफ द फ्यूचर विल बी फॉट ओवर वाटर वाटर इज वेरी प्रिसियस 
and it makes us healthy. So water and uh, environment with lot of green leaves and trees are very important. We need to protect and develop. So five minutes more I will describe. After that, I will switch over to other panelists. Let us develop good habit for good health. We have to exercise, walking daily, and visit beautiful natural places. We have to focus on uh, mental and physical health both equally. We have to practice walking yoga exercise daily because uh, we, we can take healthy decision only when we are physically and mentally fit. So fitness is very much required. So for mental fitness, 10 important ways to improve your brain fitness. These are very exhaustive, but I am just highlighting. We should practice all these things in our daily life, like playing games, meditation, eat park, your brain, tell good stories, turn off your television. Because television is called idiot park, but some good things is also there. So we should adapt by using our filters. Exercise body to exercise brain. Read something differently. Or a new skill, learn new skill. Make simple changes, train our brain. Because we have to make our memory stronger with the high speed, creativity, attention, focus, and flexibility. जो भी अति शक्ति ना होते हुए भी मन से हार नहीं मानता है उसको दुनिया की कोई भी ताकत हरा नहीं सकती. Mental strength is more important than physical strength. We should focus accordingly. Never give up to achieve our goals, targets, and objectives in any kind of situation. We should fight for survival and growth. Work harder and harder. Never give up to achieve our targets. We are determined to achieve our targets. So in any kind of situation, we should not give up. Never lose hope. Try again and again to get success. Given ka mantra. Lagatar ho rahi ya sapaltao se niraas nahi hona chahiye. Kabhi kabhi gutche ki aakhri chabhi bhi tala khol deti hai. So sada sakar atma grahe. Let us try again and again till getting success. मार्टिन लूथर किंग ने कहा था अगर तुम उड़ नहीं सकते तो दौड़ो अगर तुम दौड़ नहीं सकते तो चलो अगर तुम चल नहीं सकते तो रहेंगो पर आगे बढ़ते रहो अपनी सोच और दिशा बदलो सफलता आपका स्वागत करेगी एवरीवन इन इंपॉर्टेंट लेट अस इंक्लूड ऑल ऑफ देम फॉर नेशनल डेवलपमेंट लीडिंग टू इंटरनेशनल डेवलपमेंट लेट अस इंटीग्रेट ऑल काइंड ऑफ पीपुल फॉर इंटीग्रेटेड नेशनल डेवलपमेंट We should not ignore anyone. All are important. The opportunity matters. So let us be optimistic and have positive attitude. Something will be better in future. So life is existing on bad things. So never underestimate yourself. You are not useless. You are useless. You are not careless. You are careless. Failure is the opportunity. To begin again more intelligently, it is said by Henry Ford. So we should not be afraid of failure. We should try again and again to get the success. So let us share feelings while being happy or sorrow in all kind of situation, like the uh, animals are doing and birds are doing. Being a human, we should also practice and get the benefit. अपने विचारों प्रेम खुशी और दुख को साझा करने में कभी भी संकोच न करें नेवर हेजिटेट टू शेयर योर आइडिया लव हैप्पीनेस एंड सारो लाइक दिस एग्जाम्पल गिवेन टू ऑल ऑफ यू म्यूचुअल हेल्प एंड कोऑपरेशन आर रिक्वायर्ड फॉर बेटर सोशल लाइफ इंडिविजुअल कैन नॉट डू मच बिकॉज देर इज ए लिमिटेशन ऑफ रिसोर्सेज एंड टाइम सो वी शुड कोऑपरेट एंड हेल्प म्यूचुअली Let us try to love and help each other. We cannot help everyone, but everyone can help someone. So there should be helping nature. A leader must act and show caring nature as parent and perform duty and responsibility with honesty and integrity. कुछ करके दिखाना है तभी लीडर आप बन सकते हैं. यदि आप लोगों को जज करते हैं, तो आपके पास उन्हें प्यार करने का कोई समय नहीं है. Said by Mother Teresa, if you judge people, you have no time to love them. Love here, you see, most important, powerful tool 
and big driving force in life cycle. For example, we have uh, learned about Elon Musk. जैसे बोलते हैं कि एलन मस्क को धरती से प्यार हो गया अर्थ ही मेड लव विद अर्थ सो पीपुल लिविंग ऑन अर्थ ही वॉज अफेड दैट वन डे विल कम दैट अर्थ विल बी डिस्टार्ड एंड पीपुल विल बी डाइड सो ही इज मेकिंग ए प्लान टू शिफ्ट द लाइफ ऑन मार्स सो ही हैज डेवलप री यूजेबल एंड कमर्शियली वाइबल राकेट बाई हिज ओन लर्निंग सेल्फ टाट सेल्फ लर्निंग so he is trying hard so we should love uh, ourselves society to get the meaning of the life never practice or promote superstition think and act logically we let us have courage to say no to superstition we should not promote superstition either directly or indirectly because it destroys the life cycle and also destroys the स्किल्स एंड इंटेलिजेंस इंसान जब हथेली की रेखाओं में भविष्य ढूंढने लगे तब समझ लेना कि उसके बाजू में ताकत और मनोविश्वास कम हो गया है सो लेट अस एक्ट टू स्टॉप एट्रोसिटीज एंड एक्सप्लोटेशन टू एस्योर जस्टिस प्रोटेक्ट एंड डेवलप द पुअर सोशली एजुकेशनली एंड इकोनॉमिकली बैकवर्ड पीपुल चिल्ड्रेन एंड वोमेन फॉलो रूल्स प्रोसीजर्स एंड प्रोसेस ऑफ लॉ Stop sexual harassment. Stop child protection. We should not help or indulge in any way, directly or indirectly, in such kind of activity. So, all those who are indulged, we should uh, avoid and uh, we should stop those things. And there is a five D mantra to achieve the success: destination, determination, dedication, devotion, discipline. internal and external both are one day will come if you practice all these five d there is a certain to get the success so now let us involve ourselves so much like dijon to enjoy the training and uh, result will come fruitfully so thanks for seeing and listening to me so now i request next panelist sri sumit goel sir to say a few words sumit goel sir sir uh, welcome to all the participants and uh, thanks to cdac for arranging the course uh, for uh, in collaboration with nabm and cdac hyderabad so i hope that these five days will be fruitful and without taking much of time uh, ram ji has given a very good kick start to the training so i hand over to ram ji back in this training a great success thank you asking sb mukesh sahab adg has not yet joined so now i am going to sir mukesh sahab are you listening are you here sb mukesh sahab Not available, I think. Ram, do you continue, now? sir? Sir, sir, Goel Sahab, are you saying something? Uh, he is busy. In, he is busy in a meeting. Uh, he will be joining later. Okay, okay, uh, As we meeting later, sir, he is busy. In... Further going on, so I thank uh, to C H S Murthy Sahab, Director I S E A C D E C H Hyderabad, and we are very much grateful to him that he has. accepted our proposal in light uh, and spirit in the first instance itself so now i hand over this to uh, before going to uh, chs murthy sir i ask uh, the my project manager yam jagdish babu to say a few words about him after that he, murthy sir can start jagdish babu sir uh thank you sir uh, murthy sir uh, i'll just spend from 5 uh, minutes to introduce about the project sir or like uh, you will uh, continue please please go ahead all right sir thank you
uh, good morning all of you and let me introduce about the project uh, which we are doing and uh, as part of this like uh, we were uh, covering and i myself jagdish babu uh, from uh, information security education awareness cida hyderabad and we are going to talk about and the project which we are uh, because like we are going to be there for next 5 days you know uh, thought of like introducing about like what is that we were doing under the information security education awareness project so basically this is a project of ministry of electronics and information technology government of india and executed by the cida hyderabad i think most of the people might uh, have uh, aware about uh, cida uh, cida is basically a center for uh, development of advanced computing uh, which is a society under the ministry of electronics and information technology uh, government of india and uh, the cida was established you know to uh, to develop a indogenous uh, uh, param supercomputer okay so with that like it was started in 1988 and we have uh, launched the first uh, param supercomputer i think most of the people might uh, might aware uh, about the uh, param computer also so because uh, to develop the supercomputer only like uh, cdec was established and the first supercomputer was developed and later on like we have uh, you know a latest uh, param yuva padma uh, like we have param param yuva param padma param padma plus and the supercomputers and which is one of the you know uh, uh, fifth uh, uh, supercomputer uh, in asia uh, the one which we are having presently and uh, cdec was spread across uh, more than 11 cities and more than uh, uh, you know uh, 2700 uh, 30 uh, research and development professionals across these uh, 12 uh, 12 centers and of course there are many other people and cdec is basically into the uh, research and development organization and as i told you like it is a part of uh, mighty and cdec was you know focusing on these areas like high performance ca- computing grid ca- uh, grid computing cloud computing and we are also into the multilingual computing aids computing uh, we are also into the professional electronics including very large scale uh, system integration uh, and uh, embedded systems like where we are you know working with many department across india as part of the smart india project uh and we are also into the software technologies including uh, including foss free and open source uh, software solutions as part of that like we have uh, developed the boss boss operating bharatiya operating system solutions and which is launched and uh, many financial institutions still they are using and we were uh, uh, we, uh, uh, we were also into the cyber security and uh, cyber forensics and our cdec hyderabad is uh, you know involved completely into the cyber security and cdec tirunanthapuram is completely involved into the cyber forensics and like we all work you know all the uh, all uh, living centers uh, work across the uh, these technologies and we are also into the health informatics and uh, health informatics and we also train the people uh, we are also into the education and training under that like we train all the you know uh, uh, people like you know uh, there will be a national level examination where all the qualified people we will train them like uh, for btech people mtech people Uh, we offer them you know industry uh, cut, uh, cutting edge uh, you know uh, trainings and we will uh, make them ready uh, to face the industry challenges and uh, you know we offer these 6 uh, months uh, post graduate diploma courses across all the living centers so these are the some of the areas like uh, uh, these are the some of the areas uh, where cdec is uh, into of course there are so many other areas but uh, you know uh, do, during the course of the uh, sessions uh, you will come to know all those uh, things and especially uh, the project where we are in right now is information security education awareness project uh, it is a project uh, it, it is a project by the ministry of electronics and information technology a uh, government of india uh, and cdec hyderabad is implementing that and the core objective of this uh, information security education awareness is generation of core resource manpower uh, as per the nascom report uh, there is a more than 8 lakh cyber security professionals are required in india uh, are required uh, uh, to address that gap you know uh, like we were trying from our uh, from our uh, side a little uh, a little uh, by offering formal and non formal courses and we are also offering this faculty uh, training programs the faculty who are already you know uh, into the education uh, in into the education and teaching the student so that we will upgrade their skills so that they will be able to uh, they will be able to deliver their lectures 
in a uh, perfect manner so that the students also can learn and they also can become a good uh, uh, core research manpower as part of the uh, uh, information security. And we also offer these uh, short term and uh, specialized courses for the professionals, the professionals who are already in service, you know, like go government services. There are, you know, uh, uh, non, non IT and IT and network professionals. So, like, we uh, try to build the capacities of the people, like, who are already in the profession, like, in terms of this network security and uh, security, uh, like, all these uh, organizational security, who, uh, whoever is involved. So, we'll try to build their capacities as part of the project and, uh, you know, so that they will be able to perform their duty in the perfect manner. And we also uh, train the government, offic uh, government officials at various cadres. So, this is one such kind of program. And we're also uh, uh, fully involved into the awareness campaign across the nation. And we were implementing this uh, awareness campaign. There are so many aspects. I'll just show you some of the aspects. And th these are the, you know, uh, implementation structure uh, where people are involved. The 50 institutions across our India are in involved. As a CDAC Hyderabad, it is difficult to, you know, implement this project. So all the, you know, IIS is Bangalore, IIT, Mumbai, Gauhati, uh, these people are also involved and IITs are involved and uh, NITs and IITs and the Center of Excellence Centers are also involved. All 13 CDAC and NILET centers are involved acro uh, across the India and the five technical institutions are also there. So including all these things, uh, 52 institutions are working for this, uh, uh, for this information security education a project to implement across the India. So like what are the courses which we are talking about, core research, uh, core research manpower are offered by these uh, ISRDs and RCs and uh, PIs and the government training completely implemented by the all CDAC and NILET centers and complete awareness is uh, taken care of by the CDAC Hyderabad center. Like we are also taking the support from all these uh, uh, resource centers, participating institutions across. So I thought like we should, uh, you all should have it. Uh, before uh, you know, start the project and what are the uh, why this project was established Be because of that reason only. Uh, I I thought of like uh, in introduce about this uh, information security education awareness project, and this is how uh, delivery mechanism when we are into the awareness, uh, we are trying to uh, we are trying to attend the people you know direct and indirect mode. In the direct mode, like we uh, used to organize these workshops, you know, academic workshops, government users and uh, general users, which we used to do off day, one day kind of uh, awareness workshops across India uh, through our participating institutions. And we are also in, in indirect mode because like every nook and corner we cannot reach uh, in India. So in, in indirect mode, we are trying to reach by establishing an InfoSec awareness portal. And at the same time, we are also associating with the NCRT, CBSC people, uh, you know, uh, these boards. So that they will be developing these syllabus and they will be including okay uh, the cyber security uh, some of the modules were developed and introduced as part of the uh, core uh, as part of the ICT curriculum so that is how uh, like we are trying to reach uh, the schools across India and we are also having uh, this portal and uh, we are also using the print and electronic media and we are also running a toll free number and we will introduce you like our toll free number so that you can keep in touch with our people and in the information security education awareness portal infosec awareness dot in portal you will be having all this information uh, the content is available in uh, uh, 10 indian languages and there is a huge amount of uh, uh, multimedia material is available in the forms in the form of posters sticker videos awareness videos and all and uh, already ram sir has shared one book like which is meant for the public. So the book is already shared in the group. And you also can, uh, you know, go, th uh, go through this InfoSec Awareness dot in portal and you can download the books and you can make use of those things. And we are also developed this cotton books exclusively for the uh, children and students. And we are also organizing this painting competition. We will introduce you. So we also request your support to promote uh, this painting competition across India. And b before handing over uh, to Nirmala, uh, I request, you know, uh, of course, like we are getting a who's uh, very good, uh, very good support uh, across all DD, uh, all DDKs and uh, uh, all India radio stations across India. Uh, with your kind support, uh, we were able to, you know, we, we are able to uh, deliver somewhere around 50, uh, 60 to 60 programs, uh, awareness programs we have organized with all your kind support. So we request uh, uh, your kind support uh, should be continued and uh, on, on public interest. 
if we create this kind of awareness among the masses so those people also will get benefit and accordingly the nation also can be uh, kept uh, securely okay so with that introduction of course like i will be talking uh, you know during the course of the action so with this uh, i request nirmala to introduce uh, cha smuthi sir uh, associate director sida kadrabad and he is also national coordinator for implementing this uh, information security uh, education awareness project and over to nirmala thank you sir for giving me the opportunity to introduce uh, uh, our associate director uh, chandrapati uh, a satyanarayan murthy sir uh, chas murthy sir has uh, pursued his mtech degree uh, in spatial information technology rs and gis from uh, jawaharlal nehru technical university hyderabad and he is pursuing his phd in computer science from gfsu mr chas murthy is currently associate director and the hod for information security services cdac uh, he has a long standing highly productive and uh, techno administrative acumen for project proposals submission to project completion and deployment uh, feasibility studies requirement analysis organization of workshops seminars and technical exhibitions as part of systems network and cyber security teams with the technology leadership with more than 20 years of experience he is passionate about technology and it management in business transformation he is a think tank member of our r&d for systems and the network security teams and it ict management his research management vision and contribution also encompass into many fields having initiated params uh, computing facilities at hyderabad center he initiated uh, cyber security services in cdac and played key role in achieving certain uh, m paneled for cdac during the period of 2013 14 and leading audit and assessment teams at cdac uh, sorry nirmala ma'am can you please uh, uh, increase your voice okay sir i just hope uh, can we start that would be enough for the introduction uh, hello sir here am i yeah. audible sir uh, thank you uh, Uh, for giving nice uh, introduction for me, and uh, I thank uh, Mr. Ram uh, of uh, NAPM and uh, Sumit Goel for giving opportunity uh, to discuss with uh, various uh, uh, Kendra's members across India. And uh, so we are also conducting a training uh, on seventh and eighth for government official training, which is on practical oriented training in association with the uh, interested economy. But uh, for this training uh, is uh, required uh, the people who are part of uh, managing the systems and networks. I request Mr. Ram to identify ten uh, people across India who are uh, working on systems and networks and communication, so that we can accommodate these ten members in that training also because that is a two-day practical oriented training for government officials. So that is what my request to Mr. Ram and uh, Sumit Goel. Uh, to nominate 10 members on uh, this uh, friday and saturday uh, this training uh, that and two days uh, 24 hours lab practical also is there based on their interest they can attempt it as you know very well about uh, this training uh, this is we are conducting uh, as part of information security education and research project by ministry of electronics and information technology and also we are very much thankful to uh, both uh, prasar bharati to support us to disseminate as much as information through um, dd and all india radio kendras so where even the last week also i attended one uh, d uh, year dd uh, telangana uh, saptagiri uh, sorry uh, yadagiri uh, which we are continuously they are supporting us to deliver as many as uh, video or even though they were promoting uh, tips and small small videos which are uh, relevant to the general public so today coming to uh, my introduction lecture we majorly talking about uh, uh, introduction to internet just i'm scared sharing my screen and uh, i don't know just a minute so i have a number of uh, uh, ppts where i may be changing Uh, from one pp to another pp based on the requirements and i hope uh, uh, is it visible the my screen yes sir it's visible sir 
Okay. Uh, coming to that, uh, uh, this tiny, this kind of programs which we are introducing uh, to keep everybody safe while they are online. That is what our motto. Uh, because uh, most people are thinking about cyber security. The cyber security and the information security, both are very much different. Maybe one is a super set of, like you take example, information security, the super set of cyber security. Uh, that is what why information security is important for any government official. That is what we also discussed today as part of this lecture. Otherwise, uh, today agenda may be uh, like an introduction to internet. So how internet works and uh, the what are the characteristics of various information security, how it is related to cyber security and other things and what are the most important things and principles in the information security and maybe some of the cyber uh, kind of uh, attacks and uh, what are the networks, bots. So these are the some of the topics which we'll discuss it. Uh, every 10 minutes or 15 minutes, maybe you can, uh, I can check chat so that if you have any on, uh, or otherwise I may post some questions, you may be answered so that in a breaks, we will go through that and see that your mood of the learning so that it would be easy for us uh, to understand how you are receiving this thing. However, I will press uh, some of the points so that uh, definitely you will concentrate on that so that you will get in the examination and examination uh, so that you can clear that whatever the 50% of the uh, examination. The second point, which we also have a kind of e-learning portal where we request to all of you to register and send this program so that continuous learning and updates would be delivered through e-learning platform and the whatever that we created, WhatsApp platform, which we will continuously send uh, tips, technologies and uh, guidance so that by going through that itself, you can be part of uh, this information security domain and understand the various threats so that you can be safe uh, that uh, as actively participating. Now coming to that uh, next part, which we so learn about the internet fundamentals. So basically, so what exactly internet fundamentals? Let's say you are using a computer, of government computer use karte hai, na? So com either computer use karte hai or mobile use karte hai. Um, um, otherwise, uh, laptop use karate. Where which we connect to some network. Is the network in the sense nothing but a computers connecting two or more computers together is we call a network because we are connecting locally. I'm local may connect karraina, PCLM unko am bolenge is a local area network. Suppose let's say uh up garme a Wi Fi router rate, a broadband router rahengai so that you may be connecting this broadband router here so to connect other pc or other members pc also you can share the data while we are connecting with a particular wi-fi router so am i right so then maybe in the same way we may be connecting in the organization from your computer to some switch or we called a route a switch or hub which is connected in your office where you will connect your PC so that you can talk to other colleagues. In similarly, other colleagues. So this is where, so if you are in your house, Wi-Fi broadband router rata hai, basically connecting these two networks. Or if you are in the office, you have a switch or uh, what you can say that hub may be there so that you can connect. So then what happens? Either it, your Wi-Fi router or your office uh, switch may be connecting to the gateway so like in a uh, to gateway to connect your internet so what exactly happens when you are connecting your wi-fi router maybe your wi-fi router could be also part of the broadband so that they connect uh, directly connect to the internet sometimes what happens if you want security you may be using an another computer where as a firewall so that everybody in home you can connect uh, internet through this firewall so that you can filter the devices Time permits, what is exactly firewall and all desktop firewall how do you configure we may learn in this week so otherwise so organizations in generally they will connect to the gateway through firewall and connecting the internet so what is exactly we understood with this so while we are connecting internet we have an intermediary devices 
called hubs or switches, wiper routers, gateways. So A devices, intermediate devices are also called as inter-networking devices. So there are in the same network connect karne ke liye apko hub and switch, same computers in a room or same computers in a office connect karne ke liye apko hub switch hona chahiye or two different networks, aapka ghar ka network with another ghar ka uh, home to home network or aapka office ka network to connect to another office in your same organization, you may require some gateway to talk to each other or to connect to internet. This is where basically we required internet working devices in between your computers to talk to each other, whether you are connecting to internet, whether you are connecting to different office. So this is what uh, base fundamental for the internet uh, initially to connect the network. However, I don't know, there are 200 people are joined in this uh, uh, webinar. So I don't know the information which we are giving with the right to each and every member, we don't know. If somebody may be already knowing, so let us understand that to keep that uh, intact to everybody should learn these things. That's what you may please uh, stay with and raise if any questions, if you wanted to cover uh, in this uh, itself so that we try to cover. So what is exactly? So we are connecting all, that globe is connected with various connectivities through wires and this, uh, computers. So everybody thinks that internet is in a cloud. It's, something is there. So because of my my mobile is there, my mobile simply I'm connecting and data is going outside and data is coming inside. So it is going to the cloud, cloud of data. So that's what internet is a cloud. Everybody thinks that. But actually these clouds are connected with wires also. Let's see, check about this, the diagram. So the how internet is connected. So if you are going to that particularly uh, kind of in a, a cable map, if you see this is a website, submarinecablemap.com. Let's, if you, is it visible, uh, this map? Anybody, yes? It is visible, it is visible. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, it is visible, sir. If you see that India map, India is connected at Mumbai, Kochi, Trivandrum, and this place, basically, if you click it, you may know that where exactly this place also. So it is a Tutikoran and uh, Chennai. And these are the places India, the submarine is con connected. If you go through a further distance, and if you click any line, where, what is that exactly line if you, if you wanted to know, so which is connecting this particular line. So if we, Go to this network, how this network is connected, how our islands are connected with this cable. So across global, it is in a submarine, is a made that entire globe as a one united organization, internet organization. We are all part of that. There are no boundaries at all. Whatever you are sending a message, data, whether it is right or wrong, that will go to everywhere without any requirements of visa and control. You want to speak with some Chinese without visa, you can Chinese because there is no control anywhere the data would go easily through wires. Of course, in the land uh, that you know very well about various ISPs laying their cables across that, but all entire continental network look like is in a similar fashion where how beautifully this is connected. You can see that. So you can visit this submarine cable map.com. So that means what is my point here is that, so basically we are all connected with wires. However, it is a submarine or uh, however with any other. So that is what my point here. And shipping back to again. So now, let understanding further for. Suppose let's say uh, you wanted to connect uh, a google.com, basically uh, connect through your browser. If you are typing www.google.com, what exactly happens? Whether computer, any computer can understand google.com, that is what point we need to understand. Computers cannot understand microsoft.com 
com google dot com cdac dot com or prasar bharti dot gov dot in these are the things they cannot understand each other so basically even if you are connecting to the google dot com whether it is uh, google is there in the india or google is in singapore google is maybe there in the us their servers are there but to connect you need an a kind of a cable in this system which we have seen that how cables are connected in previous slide so when you type www.google.com what happens so there is an a because of that any computer cannot understand such kind of address www.google.com is a kind of an a addressing to reach that server and get the packet and see that that google pays but here so computers cannot understand like any kind of in you know, this kind of format of address so that first it will go to a dns server so dns server is nothing but domain naming system which is basically uh, uh, what exactly is a, see computers can only understand ip address the ip address is a 32 bit address divided into four octets each octet having an eight bits so eight bits that means each bit is like a, if you are keeping into the digital form that bit form 1111 so if you are adding this in the mathematically the value is maximum 256 so then 0 to 255 is what that number it can take it so always remember that this octet is between 0 to 255 because all zeros is 0 all ones is 255 so in between only this octet would be there so that's what you need to understand ip addressing system uh, to send a communication to a particular server to understand so google is having this particular ip address maybe when you are allocating uh, your when you are typing your google.com itself you also have the same ip address some ip address would be there your isp would be uh, providing an a public ip address to you so that you can connect only to the another public ip address so what is the main difference between public ip address and private ip address see uh, basically they were divided into three uh, five networks class a class b class c class d class e somebody will be discussing about these things otherwise in your e learning platform uh, definitely will be discussing about these things so either one of the class that organizations host their uh, things so that means there are 32 bits are there so 2 power 32 addresses are public ip addresses are required to connect each and everything so because when you are using ip addressing four octets 8 into 8 uh, sorry four octets 4 into 8 32 bit so maximum you have only 2 power 32 public ip addresses in case these are the public ip addresses you require to connect internet even the 2 power 32 ip addresses in india each computer if it is given so only india is not sufficient to access the internet so that everywhere they were reserved some of the ip addresses as a private ip addresses maybe you are have seen about 192.168.1. dot network in your office these are the private to your ip addresses in similarly a class they were the uh, reserved 10 dot network and b class 172 class network 172 dot 16 class network reserved in c class 192 where we have seen these ip addresses to connect our local computers but connecting the outside outside any organization you required the public ip address so to when you type www.google.com you have to go to there and reach this uh, computer but when your computer may not understand what is the ip address of the google server where it will go to dns server where dns server tells about the google.com ip address is this one you may go ahead and uh, and access then this would be back to him then it will go to the accessing that 142.250.6746 from then the both uh, uh, then computers will connect so it's like in your lan network only basically so connecting the two computers but however as we discussed it before this lan is having more intermediate devices because of the that your google server is at uh, internet 
so internet when you are contacting internet when you want to reach a destination server in internet you need to travel across these intermediate devices so it would be going that so all these things are making into a form into a cloud that is what we called internet cloud so all these are things are working on on this these seven layers basically so these seven layers are very important uh, why because that uh, see whether you are sending an email or whether you are accessing in a web page or you are doing something else in internet so all these are working on tcp ip protocol mechanisms the tcp ip is designed by uh, unix uh, based uh, at that time uh, jerax intel uh, all these organization is designed the tcp ip for unix networking but however as per iso there are seven osa layers as a designed and defined so that anybody is designing and developing to connect to two computers or three computers or distant computers lan computers so that people should follow whoever developing this particular seven layers so this is application layer so let's say take example of so application is nothing but here you may be having an email you may be having in a web am i right when you are opening in a web page that you are able to see that web page that browser is called as an application or otherwise you are sending an email for sending an email either you are using browser or your email client like uh, whatever that or oh, uh, microsoft uh, email client or linux email client so these are the application when application when you let's take an example here when you are opening an application like an email so that is that is what you are able to see that then before sending email what you write you write a mail or uh, uh, you may be uh, sending in a, a secret information by encrypting or maybe you are doing encoding which is uh, compatible to with the other networks or maybe you are uh, adding a graphical representation so that how you are presenting that presentation layer will take care of then when you are written entire mail and you are planning to send that means what exactly you do that you will click send so then when you click sending that particular email client looks about the server and try to connect a session to the server so that client server communication would be established okay so this client server that local server client established then it will go to that transport layer where it looks about that because when you are sending an email maybe that your email server is gmail and you are sending to the hotmail so so the mail uh, the, from the google.com to and hotmail.com you need to have a, some kind of a travel between among the intermediate devices which we discussed and so that it it establishes a kind of an a transport end to end connectivity so that it is a right up, uh, right way to connecting the, the hotmail server and maybe you have seen in the cloud there are different ways to travel uh, because the routers are connected in such a way that so there are so many paths can be created and you need to select a best path best path is nothing but not in a shortest path best path is that how much fast and low cost you can deliver the packet that is where you need to uh, push this package so that's what best path would be done in the network layer and the different medias you may be sending through wi-fi and there is wild uh, wild land so the, but you encoding and uh, uh, required so that transferring one media to another media this data link layer will take care of of course physical layer connectivity wires are required to transfer your data that will take care of the physical data transfer so that is where your email will be delivering from one point to another point so not only email you let take in a whatsapp you let take in a telegram or any application which you are using in internet they should follow this particular uh, layers all this application presentation session transport network data link physical layers so now so actually that if you compare with osa tcp ip so in the tcp ip whatever we discussed in the application presentation session there will considered as an application layer in tcp ip transport layer functionality same as what exactly osa recommended in tcp ip also network and uh, 
data network is also follows the same as the transport layer uh, network functionality of OSI would be done at uh, TCP IP. But data link and physical layer, data link physical layer is uh, like an, uh, they made it as an access layer so that one layer will take care of. Of course, somebody will define this data link and physical layer in two layers where the, so some people will say that TCP IP is having a five layers instead of four layers. So, so now, as we discussed it before, when you are connecting in the office, your computer to sun, layer one devices, repeaters are hubs. So same uh, bridges and switches are there where which, which we generally compare with the data link layers. That's what layer two devices. Layer three de devices are routers. Routers are required between connecting between two different networks. <coughs> Sorry where bridges or switches are required, which is connecting them in the same network, your office network. Repeaters is only that repeating the data packets from one to another side, where which is very uh, dangerous for the cybersecurity uh, perspective. So where which we will discuss why repeaters are, uh, because the repeater is only repeating the, your data, because as we discussed, the addressing system can happen at layer two and layer three, and layer one, there is no addressing system, so that it sends each and everybody. Suppose, let's say if I'm sending a packet to a particular person in an organization, because there is no, it is connected in the lawn land network and using by repeater, it doesn't address the actual uh, target address. It, it won't understand, so that it delivers the packet to each and everybody of all 100 members in the network. So that if somebody is receiving my message in clear, he can see my passwords, he can see my data, whatever I send to some target person. So this is one of the uh, protocols which we generally, the application like HTTP, HTTP, FTP, Telnet, all these are in the application layer. TCP, UDP, ICMP are required transport layer where network or supported network layers are IP, ARP, IPX. So maybe it's a few, more technical, which I'm not uh, discussing each and everything. Uh, but understanding purpose, you required these four five layers are uh, as discussed in TCP IP. So that when somebody is sending a data, each data is covered. The data, when it is pushing to the transport layer, transport layer header will be added. Then when it is pushing to the network layer, so it's basically uh, what happens, it is the IP header would be, a network layer header would be added. When it is pushing to the second layer, second layer header would be added. So the data generally, one member is sending the data, the data, TCP header data, IP header data, then Ethernet header data, then it travels in the first layer. Then when after receiving side, so when it receives at the Ethernet layer, so Ethernet header would be removed, then IP header removed, then data removed so that user can see the picture. So two people when talk to each other, the data would be encoded and added with the headers and travels to lower layer, which is physical address. When receiving side, the data will come from the physical layer to above application layer. Sending side, application layer to physical layer. Receiving side, physical layer to application layer. So user only can see, can do anything at application layer only. While receive, sending, he will start with the sending the data, whether it is email, WhatsApp, but every layer adds his uh, uh, header and pushing towards the network. So while receiving station received, every header will be removed in each layer. Then finally it will deliver to application layer to see the data. So this is what generally, maybe you have to remember that one or one question may come in. So when data is there, so basically, your application data, your email, would be added with the application header and called as an a data. Then application data, application header and data at the transport layer is called as a data and transport header would be added. So this entire packet would be called segment. So the data which is called in application layer called as an a in transport layer as a segment. The same data, transport header layer plus data, which is called segment, would be they push it to the network layer, which is called as a data. Once it is added internet header, that is called packet. So that 
a data called in application layer as a data or message the same data when it is in transport layer as called as a segment and the same data when it is moved to the network layer it is called packet and of course when it is traveling in wire and wi-fi or wireless it is called frame that is if it is ethernet network ethernet frame wi-fi network is a wireless frame which we called 802.11 uh, frame so this is what so any data in terms of various positions or various layers data could be called in a different ways so the data at application layer is the data or message data at a transport layer as a segment data at a trans uh, network layer as a packet and the data at a physical layer or data at in wire and wireless environment is called frame please remember these uh, terms so that it is very easy so that when packet receives that in incoming frame is coming to my computer so that computer looks about at ethernet frame and whether it is address resolution protocol or internet protocol or rp so basically that ip would be if it let's say we arp that is up to second layer only it drops arp and rarp so arp is address resolution protocol when you type ping command let's say ping command uh, and ping to know about whether remote system is available or not for that arp will look at so as we discussed dns is looking about the ip address and the name the arp looking about the ip address and mac address so what is the mac address mac address is, is a unique address of a computer system most of the softwares to identify your mac your system they will use mac because mac is unified to your system the mac address is a 48 bit where 24 bit the company who developed that particular ethernet card and the remaining 24 bit is the unique number so that any computer is uniquely identified with the mac and arp is that is the resolves the ip address to mac address of that computer so if it is case of any application like http use it that ip will be going to that tcp and application suppose let's say now streaming is happening the packets you receiving at my video streaming is the udp packet so ethernet driver ip udp and your whatever video streaming which you are doing at your side you would be happening at this udp packet like this there are number of application number of protocols would be there so that your computer can understand easily so now coming to that actually if you are understanding that so basically let's say you have a one computer and you may be using a web browser to access a particular server any like let is a google so as we discussed it before so the addressing system are only the ip or mac address ip is 32 bit mac address is 48 bit when you are trying to access a web server so www.google.com or www.cdac.in cannot understand by these computers so they should connect to dns server where dns query would be done as i don't know this web server address could you please give that address then dns servers response with an ip address with the four octets 192.168.91.1 which is like private ip address but even though they are in the private environment also if you wanted to access a server with a name you should have a, this dns server then what exactly happens once i get the public uh, or ip address then through ip address only i can access the web server let this is what web server then i will send an arp request because if it is a local environment arp request is very arp is what we discussed to know understand what is that ip address through ip address knowing ip address is through dns server knowing mac address which is 48 bit of that system unique system id through arp so once we received arp this is like look like an hexadecimal 48 bit number there are six octet six uh, are there six uh, divided into six numbers so each division is basically is 
eight. That means one zero is in a kind of in a this uh, four bits. So there are that way we uh, we need to understand what is the exact IP address. Of course, zero 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 three FF is that is the Cisco's uh, make and three D sixty four forty seven is basically the unique address of that. So with this only sometimes what we identify that what kind of an uh, make of a particular system also we can identify. So then it happens three three TCP three way handshake then HTTP request. So if you want to be access in a website, so one at least first time two three four five six seven because these are three handshakes six seven eight. These handshakes should happen between your server and you not only web server email server whatsapp every every communication these handshakes are first then only actually what you are requesting the page www.cdac.in www.microsoft.com would be delivered to the server then on early data would be transfers so all these things are happening within micro micro or 100 second or 100 1000 second depend on the internet speed happens and this is also important for security to understand whether the communication or connection is legitimate or not also so then web page you will receive it then afterwards again tcp connection closing so this is where we require and you as we discussed, these many devices are required, repeaters, switches, routers, gateways would be there connecting to the entire internet to access. So maybe this is the hub, which if you are sending the data from here to here, the data would be issued in the repeater. But when it is switch, switch is a kind of an understanding. Switch is also second layer device, where second layer the protocol is, the ARP protocol is there, so that it can understand hardware address of this particular switch which is connected so it's maps so that when A is sending the data it will go to that port and wherever it is sending the data that would be going to the same B so but in this case uh, in this case the data A is sharing with B so you see also would be shared so that means A is sending a kind of an, a secret communication if you feel that nobody is seeing but C is receiving, C can know that. So in organization, if somebody is sending an email, Yahoo email, in the advertisement, whatever the Yahoo mail it comes, that also can be seen by anybody if you are using the repeaters. But in the switch, you cannot uh, uh, go, it cannot go to the each and every computer so that it will reach to only whatever the indented A to B, that only happens so that some security is added in the second layer because of the MAC address filtering. And when it is coming to the, the these are the switches, switches here and connecting to the, the routers that is third layer. Routers are the, basically, when you connect from your local network to different network, it could be internet, it could be something else, some other company's network or even the internet also. So where that you will use basically routers where route uh, your uh, packets to one network to another network. Then uh, you need to use some gateways, uh, like you have to keep the firewalls and uh, you have to filter the applications so that maybe you are dividing your networks. So let's say you are hosting some servers um, only for particular public and you, your LAN is there here and somebody is coming uh, through you access your network, they should not connect to your intranet missions, any user mission, because you are giving a chance to go to your website and go back. So, so that way we need to divide the networks into three different networks where you can control with some devices and gateways, generally we called it as. So this is what typical network architecture. Uh, uh, see, let's say like if you have your finance department, which is a uh, segregated within a switch so that the all finance people can talk to each other but anybody from other side they should connect through this firewall if they have access let's say your uh, project manager of a particular team production team where they wanted to connect your mission and for there so that for him only you can give the control with this firewall and access your network 
similarly when you anybody of your uh, finance department want to talk to your production department still you can configure a role that he is only can access further as i discussed before previous slide this is what gateway firewall to control a user from outside user to come to your organization and he wanted to access your web server let him access your web server and go back not to this side not to your production environment not to your finance environment so that is where gateway devices were works and your boundary router is connected to on internet router so that entire internet data internet people can talk to your organization where both are connected logically switches so that packets would be forward to firewall to check about whether they have access or not and leave it so this is what typical network and as i discussed it mac address used it for communication between the computers on the same network if both are talk to each other wanted to talk to continuously why they should go oh, net ip address because ip address is belongs to network address and your mac address is a layer 2 the communication you know that it is coming from above to down lower layer lower layer to upper layer so when talk to when they are both on same network why they have to travel all layers when they are able to communicate within the last two layers itself so that's what most preferable addressing system in the local environment is mac addressing when you are connecting other networks internet you require basically ip address let's take example this is internet router and your organization router and if both routers are connected in the same bsnl or some airtel so they also can talk to each other through mac address itself so that's what used for communication between the computers on the same network or peer to peer devices whoever connected to that networks whether it is a different router different network router is connected to your router they called as an peer to peer once you are given your router connected to internet it is also shared by internet and yourself to communicate internet this is the intermediate device for your internet and you so that it belongs to both if you are cutting to internet not to share your router then you won't get internet and similarly without my router nobody can connect to other side also to my organization so this is way this is called shared router for your organization even though you own it so till now if you have any kind of doubts you may please chat you may please sir one question is what is yes. the difference between switch and hub yeah hub hub is like in a layer one device hub is kind of in a repeater only so it works first it will work as in a first layer device the repeater is basically is nothing but repeats the data signals to from one place to another place so let's say example uh, you are using in a local area network which is the theoretically 100 meters is only you can connect these two computers but however practically you can maximum 75 meters or 60 meter within the cells so in case your organization two buildings are there and apart more than 60, 50 meter and 60 meter you required repeater what is exactly dues repeater repeater is a two port from one uh, network to another network simply transfer your data without uh, without using any kind of these things so it's a two port called repeater if the claim repeater is having eight ports then which we called and more than two ports two ports it is having more than two ports then we called it as a hub so hub is nothing but multi port repeater so once if you are sending a data from one port to another port repeater doesn't have because it is a first layer it is only looking about the wide extension only so it doesn't know addressing system so that it cannot filter so when you are sending one port to another port it sends the data to each and every port of that repeater so whoever connected the third party so that loud repeater also can receive the message what you have sent and they can see the content if the content is not encrypted but when it is coming to the switch switch is a kind of an a uh, what you called as an a bridge by having with a addressing that is mac addressing system each port can be allocated one mac address so once if eight port bridge which is nothing but 
called as a switch so what exactly in a eight port switch you have eight different computers and you can identify easily mac address though who are those comp eight computers so if computer one is having with mac one address and sending to the mac eight address so it is a clearly that bridge can forward to directly mac eight rather than sending to each and every whoever so that is what the difference between a repeater hub and switch okay so, uh, yeah one more question sir yes please uh, which device responses arp request which device Re uh, responses arp request see basically when you are connecting two computers in a local area network they talk to each other without your intervention also so when i am connecting the computer then i try to that ah, this is my ip address who are having other ip address or this is my mac address who is uh, others connected to this network having mac address that is one way or second thing when you are sending a communication before sending communication let's say you are doing a command like a ping 192.168.1.1 then you don't know what is where is the 1.1 you may be having 1.100 and you are pinging to 1.1 so it sends an arp request that who has 1.1 i would like to know i have an, some kind of message from me to receive some kind of message so it sends each and every computer who are connected in the particular computer so if i am not belongs to that uh, ip address i drop the packet suppose let's say if i am the 1.1 then immediately i'll respond with my mac address so from then onwards so there is no need of asking about who has this mac address and who has this ip address because both are registered in the the mac addressing system and maybe you can uh, open your command uh, let's say let's i'll show you how to show in your how to do in your command this one so i'm opening a terminal the So I'm uh, first of all, if I would like to know about my IP address, what exactly we'll give it? Alert from Microsoft Clip Gallery. Clip Gallery can only be launched from Office. Click OK to quit. So ping google.com. So this, what is the response is coming back? See that uh, when I ping google.com, when it is going that it will it first it will identify this ip address 142 162 uh, 250.60.46 okay so this pinging is so continuously what exactly it tells about that anybody can identify that what is the kind of system the google is hosted by seeing this particular uh, command and output and if you see that there are 64 bytes from 142 250.67.46 icmp is using internet console, uh, internet control message protocol and the ttl is 118 so this shows that the time to leave the packet how much time i can see this packet can continue uh, and the ttl also shows about that what kind of remote operating system also so basically if your uh, system is 64 or 128 based on that you can identify some operating system it is not 100 percent is correct but uh, however it gives the initial information so like 128 based this is like in a windows machine 118 is kind of they are using in a linux flavor 64 is a router 256 is a router so that way we can any attacker and anybody can identify this is one thing And also, so what is your IP address? How do you know about your IP address? So basically, this is a Mac machine so that you can use IP config machine so that you will understand when you type IP config. 
you will know all the this is what uh, your ip address so this is what config if config command then you are getting a lot of that how your system is bridge so this system is also working as in a bridge to connect to two different networks or otherwise uh, this is what you have ip address if you see that 192.168.1.104 which is your local ip address uh, because this computer is connected to my home lan so that it is allocated 1.0 network 1.4 and my broadcast is 1.255 my gateway would be 1.1 .1. so like this this is the local machine but however if you wanted to know about uh, uh, what is exactly the public ip address is connected you can type uh, in the browser know your ip address so like ip address Oh, sorry. Or simply to understand locate IP address. What is my IP address dot com IP tools. So this is what uh, IP address may be. Or you type some anything www dot google dot com. Get IP de details also you can get it. But what is your IP? You will know through this. Oh, sorry. I click at some. So a lot of programs are running. My system is uh, getting slower. So what is uh, my IP address? So that you can type simply. So that you will also know that uh, exactly what is your IP address. And uh, just I open. So just DNS. Just type DNS. Is nothing but domain. What is the DNS? How DNS works? You can learn very easily. So suppose let's say DNS server of Google. So the, this is some people are using the Google public DNS as I people will generally test with the Google public DNS 8.8.88. So even though you can check it 8.8.44 also. So it's a kind of a DNS is nothing but a record system where it lists uh, all internet public ip addresses and the corresponding the names so that is where they look into that uh, this one now just moving to the information security fundamentals so you now you understand what is the lan what is the internet how they connected internet and how dns works how arp works um, how they both are different because there are two IP addressing two addressing system in internet only these two addressing systems only walk talk to each other of any computer or to connect to internet either they use IP address or majorly when they are connecting peer networks even the initially they are connecting through IP but ultimately they will talk to ease once they are registered in the ERP table they will talk to with the MAC address when they are peer to peer devices in a network. So when, let's say, suppose example, as we discussed before, you are trying to access a web page and web page you got back, that is what we called normal flow. So you requested a web page and web page delivered to your computer. This is generally normal flow, we called it is, suppose you requested one more page, uh, where a web page where uh, it is a hanging mode it is nothing is visible nothing is coming let's say you type uh, uh, generally in your organization if your organization blocks your website uh, that particular website www.sex.com for example there is no such kind of website but if you type that and if that website is not available uh, the page may not go uh, page not found will come but instead of that page somebody that page is dropping it is not uh, coming Instead of that page, some new page coming, your organization page is coming. 
So that means what? When you request it to a particular page, instead of that page, some your organization page is coming, or something else is coming, or that page is not found, or page is nothing. Somebody, this could be a reason, maybe a interruption. Somebody is interrupting your request, or dropping the packets, or instead of that, they are re replying with some other page. That is what happening. What is exactly it is happening here? Whatever you are planning to visit that website because of this interruption, you are not able to visit. Now, third part, modification. What is the modification? <coughs> Sorry. When you are to, to access a particular website and they were taking your website and modifying the data and delivering to the end user. Let's say, uh, example, you have sent in a message, hi, but when they deliver to the end user as a hello, that means in between somebody modified your data from hi to hello. Maybe in Chinese, in the, some people, uh, maybe when they want to access something, they drop and they possibly take it to the website or they probably deliver it to the website. So because of this sign is firewall. So somebody has modified the data in between. Okay, so that is where so this is called modification. And second, here, like telephone tapping, nobody stops your or no interrupts your communication or nobody modify your communication to deliver. But here, only listening like a telephone tapping, they intercept your communication. It's like called data interception. So whatever you are sending the message to somebody, I am able to listen. I am able to understand and I am maybe able to collect your data so and putting into the site. So for future purposes. So intercepting each and every communication, whatever you are doing is called interception. In this case, nobody is sending a message to the sender. But on behalf of you, I am sending in a message and delivering to a target version. Let's say, like example, you might have got a lottery image or bank emails to update their accounts. When you are uh, seeing it look like in a page of uh, Punjab National Bank, but the way that they delivered is not the Punjab National Bank. Maybe they delivered uh, somebody is in between as in a, the link to you so that when you click uh, it is look like in a Punjab National Bank but it's not actually delivered. So somebody's fabricated that message, fabricated and created an, a, a page look like and delivered to you and maybe you may be accessing this by thinking that that is as a legitimate site of uh, uh, Punjab National Bank and uh, uh, maybe if you give the, your personal details then that guy will steal your information. So this is called fabrication. Reputation is nothing but, suppose let's say, when you are sent in a message to a, a particular person, after sending, you may be saying that you didn't send that message. Or otherwise, you received a message from person, but still you are saying that you are not received such message. Even though after knowing that, receiving the message. This is called reputation. Why reputation attacks, uh, reputation is important is that, let's say you have sent in a kind of a secret uh, by encrypting the message to your boss so that nobody can take up that, like a password protected file you have sent it. Suppose in between attack, uh, saying that this message is like he's spoofing your boss and saying that your message is not received, what happens? You will send it again. And like that he is saying so many times so that you are sending so many times, like 10 times, 20 times you are sending the same password protected file. Why I have done this? Because I am when I am, because I am an attacker, when I see that you encrypted so that I am not able to do anything. But the, now you are sending the same file, same time, number of times, or uh, same file, number of times, so that how this one encryption on one file, when you encrypt it 10 times, how the pattern is changing. To understand pattern by receiving this 10 times, the attacker may do this particular kind of an attacks. 
So once it is a normal flow, there is no problem. If somebody is interrupting the data not to deliver, आपको आप access करने के लिए website access करने के लिए किया था, लेकिन somebody is interrupting your request and not delivered, is called the problem of availability. That means you wanted to access your thing, but it's twelve hours. You are not allowed to access that particular. Web page, so availability is not there. So we called it as a problem of availability. If somebody is modifying your data, that means whatever you are sending, it is not exactly it is going there. Somebody is able to modify between, and they are uh, saying that you have sent like hi message to hello message. So when it is somebody is able to modify, so there is no integrity on that data. So whether you are rightly you only sent it or somebody changed in between, आप ही भेजा था और बीच में कोई change किया था वो data को हमको मालूम नहीं होता है. So integrity on data what you have sent is not there. So that is what integrity problem. Sending the data to somebody and between most of the people are looking about the data and they are able to see that my data even though I feel that I am sending to only that person, uh, but some third-party person is able to see that. So there is no confidentiality on the data. So that's what CIA confidentiality, integrity, and availability is. We generally called the basic principles of cybersecurity. If anything you want to secure yourself, so you have to follow these three principles: confidentiality, integrity, availability. So किसी को सिक्योरिटी करने के लिए सिक्योरिटी देने के लिए पहले वो अवेलेबिलिटी होना चाहिए देन वॉट एवर द इंफॉर्मेशन क्या क्या इंफॉर्मेशन आप उसमें रखे तो किसको भेज रहे उसी को रिसीव करने के लिए आपको आपको कॉन्फिडेंशियलिटी मेंटेन करना पड़ता है ऑफ कोर्स वॉट एवर द डेटा यू आर सेंडिंग थ्रू इंटरनेट नो बडी इन बिटवीन के नॉट चेंज इट और कोई नहीं चेंज कर सकते तो वो उनको इंटीग्रिटी है बोलने की आवश्यकता है इसलिए कॉन्फिडेंशियलिटी इंटीग्रिटी एंड अवेलेबिलिटी जीज तीन और वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट प्रिंसिपल्स ऑफ साइबर सिक्योरिटी नाउ कमिंग टू हियर इफ समबडी इज सेंडिंग मैसेज ऑन बिहाफ ऑफ यू और समबडी सेंडिंग एंड मैसेजेस ऑन लॉटरी सॉरी बैंकिंग एज एन बैंक लेजिटमेंट बैंक सो देर इज नो आदेंटिसिटी देर आर अदर टूल्स आर देयर आदेंटिसिटी आदराइजेशन एंड अकाउंटेंसी आर द सेपरेट supports principles of uh, so, uh, supported principle to implement this confidentiality integrity availability of course reputation non reputation hona hona chahiye delivery mechanism perfect hona chahiye delivery confirmation hona chahiye implement hona chahiye aise aise attack avoid karne ke liye so when you are using a computers there are number of doors are there door could be a wireless or your broadband modem or internet so when you are connected internet in computer there could be some door so that open the door to the internet so that the members can come to your system if you want to that how it is possible in your windows or linux system at your home system just load by typing google honey pot for windows honey pot for linux and just install honey pot and see that and no after connecting internet no activity you please don't do any kind of activity and see in the honey pot uh, monitor uh, your windows honey pot monitor a lot of data how your computer is talking to the internet without doing without accessing any kind of an activity on that computer you can see how your computer is talking to others or other computers in the internet how they are talking to finding scanning and everything to uh, they are doing with your computer so this can be done at your home by just uh, typing in google so for honey pot for windows uh, so there is a small software and test it and immediately look into that and afterwards uh, again uninstall it remove it so for connecting your computer there are lot of ways are there either it can be connected through wireless internet mobile or broadband 
So once, when it is connected internet, your computer is part of your network also. If there is an intermediate device of your broadband router or uh, Wi-Fi router is connected to the, along with your home computers, it hacker can hacker can come into that. Here, one, one other thing you have to remember is a hacker is always good word. Hacker is, uh, but the media made that hacker word uh, in such a way that it is in a bad word. Hacker is an enthusiast in the finding of various problems and solve the problems for the organization itself. But uh, attacker or cracker could be is more dangerous than hacker. So the, whatever the term we are using, we can call it as a for the hack, uh, attacker only. So what he can do, he can modify the logs. So first of any attacker when comes to your computer, he will try to modify your logs because in you may be uh, you may be complaining about your attack to the police. Police may come and track and see the log so that uh, his identification may be recognized. So that first he will try to cover the tracks how he came into the, your computer. Or he mess, he changes left and right, uh, he adds some uh, records or he deletes some records so that there is no proper proof or evidence is available in case if you are going to the court of uh, court to sue him. He may steal files, he may copy files, he may use your computer power also, not only stealing the files, because your computer, whatever you are using, it's not a small computer. While I'm using first computer in the 90, uh, 99s or early 2000s, my computer RAM is 64 MB, not 64 GB. My hard disk itself is 4 GB. That is what my computer, uh, by being in a supercomputer in uh, people in CDAC, that is what the machine which I used first time when I entered into CDAC. 64 MB RAM, but what is the RAM you have now? So use 32 GB, 64 GB RAM which you are using. Your browser, your movie access may be required 2 GB, 3 GB. The remaining of GB is very resource for an attacker. So in the 10 years back and 15 years back and early 2000s, if some virus is coming to my computer, I am able to easily identify because my computer is not able to respond, hang it between, such kind of things would generally happen. But when? Now, there is no such activity because at that time attackers are played with the users. Now there is no need of play. They required resources. Your computer could become as a resource to the hacker where he calmly can come to your computer, use your memory, use your space to attack third party, to attack a banking system, to attack a defense system is possible. So you also feel like that if attacker comes to my system, what he will take it? So maybe your personal information, maybe whatever you are saved, small amount of uh, after your hard work for your family. So that is what you may lose. That is what you are thinking. But it's not like that. The computer can be utilized as a resource to attack somebody so that when they track it, the initial computers would come as well. So this is what called, he installs bot. Bot is nothing but a robot, a small program that, he, that things will do on behalf of hackers. And things will do as part of the commands which are given by hacker. So he is the bot for that hacker and uh, maybe using your resources. He also can be modify your files. Nowadays, most attacks are happening. He is encrypted in the entire your file so that you cannot access. If you want to do give it, uh, give it to back or you need to pay some ransom. So ransomware are all so increasing as much as or so as I out I discussed his backdoors is nothing but or a bot, and if the bots, he may be using attack other system. Attacks are, there are three types, active. Active means directly while I'm doing that on uh, the time itself. You can easily understand somebody is changing your logs and live. But passive based attacks, social engineering. I'll try to find your name. I'll try to find your email ID. I'll try to find your passwords in stealthy mode. That is called passive phishing, snipping, wishing, 
such kind of uh, uh, attacks which may be you discuss, uh, we discussing uh, entire this week are called as a passive physical is like a tailgating war driving kid pro co companies rogue access point baiting baiting is one example where i intentionally uh, left after visiting your organization intentionally left a usb so somebody will take this usb uh, on table whatever when i visited to you and they can come to your uh, you may be plug into that who's this usb once you plug it into my malware will come my bot will install into your site so that i can monitor your activities so the attacks in generally divide into three parts passive physical and active so there are so many attacks are there attacks via communication protocols at arp spoofing ip address spoofing spoofing attacks redirect attacks ping of death attacks flood attacks fragmentation attacks these are all based on the protocols and applications attacks on authentication and based on the application uh, attacks like weak user password password nippers trojan hash programs etc to butter overflow exploits so these are the technical so you can see one of the example here so this is what july 19th in the early morning it is even the 20 years back so the worm is ex initially visible like in these countries in this set after 19 hours if you see that the worm expanded in such a way that the almost wherever the computer that particular computer windows are using every windows computer is affected within 19 hours even though it takes from india to us direct flight takes almost 15 to 16 hours so in the same time uh, that because it is very well connected your submarine cable in one computer comes and the automatically goes and self replicating program so what is the major difference between a virus and worm so both virus and worm are called as a malware malware nothing but malicious um, malicious uh, uh, software so the first three letters of malicious mal and uh, software last four letters together became as an a malware so but why malware types are types could be virus worm etc so virus is a, a kind of an a program which comes to your system through some payload that means whether it can come to uh, through your email or it is a kind of an attachment or or uh, what you can say that some form it will come to your system when you click double click and open it then only the virus will come to your system even though it reaches to your computer if you are not clicking that virus file it never comes to your computer so that's what if anybody is sending in a file unknown members but sometimes what happens it will your email look like an, uh, your colleague's email if you are looking without looking header if you double click that your uh, your colleague only sent that uh, related message to you that also dangerous mm -hmm. that could have an, some email so that you have to check that how to check legitimate email or not maybe somebody discussed it in this uh, uh, one and you can have that how to check that so once if it is there if it is an unknown member you can simply delete entire email if it is non related so otherwise if you see feel that this is a non legitimate better you call the respect to colleague and understand whether he sent any kind of mail or not so this is what you generally uh, check it and see that so virus is always comes to you when you double click and open it and all but one is not like that what we discussed in this picture is a just look into you once it comes to your computer it automatically looks like a, a similar kind of computer similar kind of problem where automatically goes because it's already reached it is only to have a mechanism to reach another computer payload is required to another computer to travel so it's a self-replicating program where it uh, goes automatically uh, nobody's help is required it's like in a any kind of in a warm why that if i have a flu of course in the physical classroom if i have a flu who will get everybody says that in my past lectures that whoever sitting in front of me am i right but actually flu never comes to, uh, only uh, members whoever uh, sitting in front of me even i'm having flu whoever weakest persons or weak persons in that 
uh, and weakest person will get first uh, that flu in that classroom. Even he sits in last also. Uh, that's what we always say is that you have to heat very good food and to fight with this kind of uh, viruses and worms. And computer here is also the same problem. When computer is weak, definitely that worm will come. If computer is patched with latest patch management and having an antivirus, good antivirus, updated antivirus, daily antivirus, and if we have a desktop firewall, such viruses, worms cannot come to your computer. So generally we say that recommend that you should have a good antivirus where it can update your antivirus every day basis. Because you know that when we are, uh, we are any human being can speak 6,000 words in a day. Of course, when such my, like my people like me may speak more words because of that we take generally classes and all. Uh, but otherwise an average 6,000 uh, words uh, we are speaking in a day. At the same time, people believe that there are 6,000 malwares are coming to your computer on daily basis. So when they are coming to your daily basis, how do we uh, stop these all 6,000 viruses or malwares? Well, maybe these all 6,000 malwares are not part of your uh, computer. Uh, in that only 20 or maximum 10 or maybe 5 or 100 viruses are related to that. Because your computer is having operating system, your computer is having number of applications, number of apps. So maybe out of this 6,000, there are 10 to 15 or 10 to or 100 viruses are related to you. By the time, if you have a kind of a proper control mechanism not to allow to enter, your computer is always safe. So use antivirus, updated antivirus, and patch in regularly. And uh, third point, you should use desktop firewall. In the second point, patch regularly. I'll tell you one example. In one of the uh, university in Hyderabad, having uh, in December 2018, 17 and 18, uh, January what time with that portal, there are 1,000 machines are there. There are 300 machines are attacked by ransomware. But 700 machines are not attacked because they have same operating system. Of course, 700 operating system, is there are latest are 700. The 300 is not updated properly. So that 700, even 300 is same part of operating system. They are not patched in regular. So that ransomware attack is happening. So that's what patching is also very important to your organization. When you are using computer, you have to understand computer. Uh, how we look about uh, how we look about uh, a particular uh, thing uh, like in a look uh, our health uh, similarly you have to look about your computer health to be safe as part of the network somebody is messaging me uh, that how files will be corrupted files can corrupted in so many ways because of the uh, compatibility of your softwares however when it is the ransomware so the files would be encrypted rather than corrupted. It would be converted into other format. And maybe some people were playing. Those who wanted to play, uh, they never release these keys. They won't give the keys. Like uh, they don't know whom they are targeting. It's like an, uh, um, uh, they were trying and they're making a fun, so somebody attacked it. So sometimes if it is a targeted attack, so they may be targeting a specific key to that and they have keys. So they convert into corrupt into different forms. It's not corruption, the ransomware is always converting into other form or encrypted form where you can open once you are adding that key. So if you want that key, you have to pay $300 in the form of Bitcoin. So that is where uh, they try to do that. So other than security, your operating system incapability or software incompatibility, the files may be corrupted. So we also see some common attacks. See that if in an organization, if you are using a server, so distributed denial of service. So what is denial of service first? We'll look into that. Denial of service, basically, uh, so here anybody is there, uh, wanted to speak with me so that I have some questions. Anybody wanted to share Gmail ID? So they can enable or they can give the speaker uh, to speak up. So questions you wanted? 
नो आई वॉन्ट टू टू स्पीक विथ समबडी हु कैन शेयर इज जी मेल आई डी अच्छा अच्छा उटिंग Uh, into encrypted form so that you cannot use it second is uh, suppose let's say you don't have some software like a jpeg but the jpeg file came and you opened with another file where the com- uh, another software its compatibility is not there it, it can be corrupted so accidentally third part is accidentally may be corrupted because of the no compatibility this is what i can see that but i want to talk to somebody who can share his gmail id can you ready to share your gmail id sir whether you are using gmail id yes yeah, yeah. miss uh, 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 miss nl chauhan ji you can speak now i have already shared my gmail id you have shared this sir gmail id what is that gmail id maybe all are our colleagues only your colleagues only share the for you yeah. chauhan for you at gmail.com for you chauhan for you at yes. gmail.com i have already written there sir it okay. is available in the chat box sir it is available in the chat box yeah okay okay just uh, let me see that okay sir what is the password sir uh, n double n oh, double sir sir stop, stop. sir sir, sir. <laughs> so this is what kind of social engineering attack am i right sir so <laughs> in the both of both of me just we asked it and you are ready to share it sometimes we give our information like that okay so yeah. but let's say it is a password is your private secret key you should not share with anybody mm. yes, thank sir. you very much but you are ready to share both also if now any other member i wanted to ask the same question who are ready to share gmail id anybody is ready anybody wanted to share gmail id paramita choudhary uh, are you ready to share your gmail id yes she shared pk takur is shared uh, uh some neet kalok gmail.com singh saman sir what is the password same thing i am asking nit kalok dot sing zero seven sing sap yes he said sorry cannot share okay see this is what the password cannot be shared but but basically parmita choudhary is also saying that the id is that was registered okay whoever registered your ids we will keep it very secure form we never share with any third party we only use for your communication only that assurance we will give it but here my point is that those who are not ready to share password what i will go i will go to the gmail.com whatever i am getting in my mind different passwords i will give five passwords what happens parmita choudhary if i am giving five different passwords five times so what generally happens is basically is that 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 account is locked am i right so the account would be locked so what i generally will do that 
for lock uh, unlock you may be doing with the various options like you, you might have given your mobile number you can reset the password and change the password that option is there for that it takes at least two to three minutes am i right but i will write a script in such a way that open a browser gmail.com give dot so and so dot gmail.com and whatever the passwords i am having with me and give enough randomly five passwords within one minute this is what script i wrote what happens what happens basically again that is locked yes it is would be locked again and when you are resetting immediately it is locking again in resetting locking again like because i am writing every one minute even the within two minutes you are able to reset it the next minute it is locked so what happened so basically i am trying to not to access that gmail account by yourself even though that account is yours so that is what i am denying the service the gmail service to you even though it is your own account this is what called denial of service attack you understand if this script i am installed into 100 computers where the innocent persons are doesn't know about security and asking them to every one minute by one by one they have to do so that if you are tracing back i am not uh, other victim so because these all 100 bots are victims so that is where we called if the for same purpose if i distributed this attack across 100 machines which we called distributed denial of service the first part is denying the service of your gmail to you even though you are the owner so it is a basically that's what we recommend as parmita choudhary is responding that so they have their some kind of an another edge access it will immediately will give it but here i am not uh, intention that accessing your gmail i uh, my intention is stopping you to not to access by you yourself so when i am giving as many as passwords by knowing your mobile number and all of course that can be done but you please don't do such kind of attack because it can track easily if the victim is complaining at police station for understanding purpose only i am explaining what is exactly denial of service attack and the distributed denial of service attack so the similar way so this is way the the distributed denial of service attack on this particular attack at server can be done so somebody is also messaged me what is the dmz and how it is very important to the security dmz is a dematerialized zone let's say when you have an organization along with the number of computers the computers could be uh, the organization might be having the internal members external members or external third parties and you are hosting computers like your web server email server so the uh, public through public also can access so when we have these many kind of an a uh, people so if you are keeping everybody in one network so that let's say your email server is also part of your network so where the users are also there what happens this email is accessing from internet that internet user is coming to your network rather than accessing the email server he tries your user system actual user system may be a dangerous so that what we do that with gateway we define the three different networks within our organization we segregate the networks whoever coming from the public they should go to the one particular network which need to be accessing through my public web server and similarly the end user also internal user also can access to if they only to that uh, this one so segregating the networks in different uh, networks is called dmgs so that means you can control this dmc based on the requirement of the access so this is one kind of in a web server hosting one dmz where you have given to the public access uh, so that the public can come and go access so what happened here i installed zombies like bots in the all these computers like simply i am telling that to ping to the server ping is many 1 lakh computers at a time pinging to your web server what happens 
because as being a web server you have to respond to three way communication which we discussed before it should respond to ping whether i am available or not the server needs to respond so i am only pinging i am not accessing the any web page so one lakh systems but the server capacity is having only can accommodate only 10000 request but i am telling one lakh zombies to access ping request then what happens this only answers the ping request only rather than giving the web page so there would be a server level ddos attack is happening but uh, the entire the data is traveling in between intermediate devices now like routers gateways they are also busy with this communication as part of the job whomever requested from a client to, to the server transferring the packets is their function so they cannot avoid their function so they are also busy with that so that bandwidth level ddos attacks then infosec routers and all also ddos attacks this way it happens so you may be remembered that uh, previously that i said three way and communication so what exactly that basically generally to understand this sin attack sin request will be going to the server server is responding to the acknowledgement to access a web page and client also should be connect back now client is not sending the third packet what happens server is trying to remember this connection if similarly again this number of zombies are sending similar kind of communications and the server is waiting keeping the memory into waiting for the next instruction but this client zombies are only sending the information not for receiving so but server doesn't know that so that is the memory is saving into the memory memory is filled so it restarts if any server is restarting very every 10 minutes 20 minutes the members cannot access that web page so that kind of things will happen now coming to the spoofing spoofing is that is like an if somebody is access speaking to jed mr jed is that you but in between why is coming i am here so if we access feels that jed has a why that all communication whatever you are sending it can be forwarded to why so why may be knowing that why can forward these messages to back to jet also like which we discussed it, modifying method but otherwise it is a, like a man in the middle attack spoofing can be done at your place also suppose let's say when ip address was given to your colleague the same ip address if you are using when he is not in office so whatever the communication is coming to you him during that uh, uh, during his office uh, absence of you know of, that message will come to you also so that way ip spoofing math spoofing such attacks can be done in the network now social engineering so while we are traveling anywhere like in train we generally share our our visiting cards i am so 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 i am doing the things for uh, these things we will uh, tell others uh, to show up uh, then what exactly is the your business card tells business card always tells your email id now every business card is present having email id email id is what murthy at cdac.in murthy is a user id cdac.in as a server so in this internet world cdac.in server is there murthy is a user id what exactly required to access murthy anybody maybe password exactly so what kind of passwords Mr. Murthy is keeping? Because Mr. Murthy is managing a supercomputer which is having 30 nodes. Murthy is managing some kind of a bank account, two to three. Some Murthy is buying share, share accounts. Murthy is having three or four email ID servers like Gmail, Yahoo Mail. So there are approximately 20 accounts are there. How do you manage the passwords? What kind of passwords you will keep to remember all these things? These are the challenges. So Murthy is generally maybe using Murthy at one, two, three. Murthy's wife name, Murthy's God name, Murthy's some 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 relation name. So this is what happens in general with all of us. Because we cannot remember as many as passwords. But if somebody is cracker one of email ID which is i kept the same my name murthy at 786 
murti at 123 murti at 987 what happens the remaining 20 accounts may be also same password if it is the same password remaining 20 accounts also can be cracked so that's what we always recommend keep different passwords for different accounts and you have to regularly change this password minimum two weeks once when it is a critical like a bank accounts bank passwords you have to change regularly every two weeks because we believe that it takes to crack a strong password at least minimum 14 days by using a number of supercomputers so that if you can change it if somebody is using supercomputer to crack your password so you are changed by that time but while it is collected data and the supercomputer itself is cracking your password the password what you use it two weeks back may be visible that's what in case tomorrow if somebody is able to crack by using a supercomputer power or the aml program that password what you are using last three password you should not use this at present at least three different last three times what you use a password you should not use you have to keep strong password you have to use a different password for a different account you should not use the last three passwords and you should not write this password anywhere you always should remember the password on your so if these difficulties setting passwords very difficult of course our people will discuss in a easy way easy method how to keep your password strong and easy to remember by using a pass process in the next classes so otherwise social engineering network is that socially moving and uh, finding about uh, your passwords let's example somebody is called from microsoft to your system administrator of nabm and say that we understand that you are using 100 microsoft licenses which are all uh, bought from the gray market rather than buying from micro from microsoft then what exactly your uh, uh, system administrator is saying no 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 you are from microsoft actually we are not at all using microsoft we bought 10 licenses or we are using only 10 microsoft operating system in us otherwise the remaining 90 we are using linux what kind of Linux you are using? Linux machines, uh, we are using Red Hat 5.2. So we are not using Microsoft. So telling Microsoft using, but you are revealing the information about uh, what kind of um, operating system you are using. For an attacker, if he calls as a spoofing Microsoft, he understand you are using 90 Linux machines and that also Red Hat 5.2. So it would be easy for me that what kind of operating systems you are using this is what information if you are not revealing the information so that you you are almost safe so now what is that with that information if i want to attack your organization i don't know what kind of tools are used i have a windows i have a linux tools i have a mac tools i have a network tools all these tools are there but if I understand that you are using a Linux kind of missions, only I can use my Linux based tools to crack you. So you made me as much as easy for me to get into your system. Of course, you may be securing that I look into that how, what are the security gap areas in your system along with these things. That is the second step. But the information is revealed. Once you reveal this information, that information is very important for anybody. So as being we are government officers we need to keep information as much as control way whom to know so least to know whoever wanted to know leastly know and we also say another principle use that separation of duties if i'm doing a particular job that job only i should know i should not know other jobs of course when you are almost manager level people where you should control the information least to know whomever knows that need to know that only need to know principally we have to use it so which we discussed in arp basically arp is the ip address mac address and they are talking to each other so when uh, who has 192.160.51.316 that is what arp request will go then immediately what happens arp reply will come 
this is what 00 bbbb is a mac address but uh, this and entirely they will note that 36 missions mac address here and it will be updated in the arp table so in this spoofing what happens whenever it is talking to that it configures both ip addresses like this it asks this system ip b ip address and it also noted down as a it informing that i am cccc and it will be noted ccc and similarly so it also information to system a so that it is updated 36 as so here you need to understand actual ip address 36 is this but this 37 is telling that 36 is having that this is the ip address this can be done here is by using some tools like ethercap uh, kind of tool so that it sends information of this ip address but mac address of this machine to updating similarly uh, this address this mac 35 has a ip address but uh, this mac address is updating so that when they two talk to each other the communication will travel like this rather than talking like this so from system a to ab instead of that so it will talk via a system c the information will flow that is where uh, ERP spoofing, this similarly IP spoofing or any kind of protocol spoofing can be done as many as tools are available with respect to that. So attack methodology, so the people will try to collect as much as information about uh, when they're targeting some kind of an organization or an individual or a system. So that the information control is very much, very much important to not to give the as much as information. So once the information, 90% of work, they will collect the, your information, they will prepare a kind of an, a blueprint of your organization, understanding about the gap areas, whether it could be your entire organization is well secured, but an individual who can pass the information, they will try to identify to collect the information. The whatever they are asking the information, whether that information is maybe not related to them, but that information could be useful for to attack higher uh, your organization. So that if anybody has some information with respect to your organization, you need to control that information the way you need to secure your organization for the purpose. So locate the victim host by same scanning program then. Generally we do that scanning uh, with various tools like Nmap and all. Try to find out what kind of web server you are hosting that web server is having only web or any other services only. Then we try to identify the vulnerabilities, that means gap areas. And once I identify, we require and exploit other programs, malware programs, or if anything is not happening, your users are connecting internet so that you send in a malware to them and crack their systems. From their systems, you can access your servers. That's what when you are giving the access to server, Internally also you need to implement same rules while publicly you are giving to the server. So that the public security also should be applied to internal so that most of the attacks are happening internally. And that means more than 70% attacks are opening into. Then install rootkit, continue that boards, internal rootkits or whatever that background block programs, you can install it and continuously track that. So buffer overflow problem also. Suppose let's say if you are seeing in a web page, web page may, uh, when you are giving a kind of an your name to apply or to register, if they were kept something, the buffer is 10, 10 characters only. If somebody is giving um, more than 10 characters and having some software, some problem, so memory cannot understand. So memory is trying to work out than what purpose. So if everybody is trying that way, so that memory will be filled up and as we discussed in the denial of service attack, and similarly, the server will restart. This is called buffer workflow problem. So if you have any questions for 10 minutes, what is the time we have, Mr. Jagdish? Uh, sir, we have another 20 more minutes, sir. Yeah, so then uh, if you have a one or two questions, I can attempt. Yes, sir. So that I will explain about what is exactly cyber safety, cyber security, threat and breach and information security. Sir, you can go up to 1.30 because the delay in the beginning occurred. Okay. Okay, sir.
<laughs> so what is the uh, if you have any questions let us know you can stop me otherwise i'm going to un- make you understand what is exactly that no sir like uh, one question is uh, like have roles and responsibilities related to the cyber security been clearly defined and communicated to every level of organization so someone is asking uh, is there any security guidelines prepared uh, for uh, organizations can be shared kind of things so basically the national security policy 2013 was already prepared every organization should prepare their own policy procedures how to access their systems and how to control their system depend on that how what kind of system they implemented at their organization but as an individual also should create their own policy what to attempt what to not attempt let's it's everybody's responsibility to create your own policy let's say if i am using a mobile without understanding in a particular app uh, i won't install such way that like that because every app is collecting every individual information uh, from your mobile whether required or not required also so every member is nowadays is making an app and simply giving this app to uh, uh, is freely so that members are like in you know, offering like a games and all members by looking up for initial games uh they were installing like one example i told in the, uh i think in the ap is andhra pradesh one and even the bihar also one program is a children downloaded uh, uh, a game where they were given uh, only asking about the account bank account or credit card account which they are not charging for the game it's a free game you can play as much as time freely entire thing but to confirm that your particular person is playing that game the account is required so the child what did it he added in bihar also he added his father account in andhra pradesh is their mother account both <coughs> added but that game is what happens now game <coughs> sorry game is required a kind of that is like a shooting game shooting game required is like in a some uh, whatever that uh, bullets are required to play that game for every bullet they were charging like a 2 rupees or 3 rupees initially they were giving 10 bullets but that game they made me they like in a what you can say that addicted to that game so to solve the, the rounds they are using games uh, that bullets so one day they were used almost 10000 bullets were 20000 rupees cost but 20000 rupees then afterwards they were not allowed because the limit of the day is 20000 from their bank account and there is a message has gone to that you have used your account your money devaj megeni when that lady is going to take some money from uh, atm so she didn't understand so she complained then when the doing a police research they understood that there are 4 lakh 50000 has gone from last 15 to 20 days because every day 20000 see, see that girl is spending in such a way that by playing that game and only for the atm only they understood the atm box told that you are not so there could be a policy by individual i won't install these games there would be a policy for family members so we should not attach any account if a pre game you can play pre game without adding any account credit card details such policy should be created among the members of the family or members of organization and follow that so these are self responsible policies or otherwise national policy is telling that everybody should create their own policy but it is not made it as a mandatory but now 2020 they are revising and maybe they make it mandatory for organizations for every device you are using this should be having as a policy <coughs> any other question yes sir yeah. uh we can locate the public ip address can we locate the private ip address from any application Yeah, uh, they are asking like, is the public uh, private IP also can be located uh, kind of? Thing. Yes, we can locate it. So because you look into that uh, tomorrow, you whomever uh, discussing about uh, email tracing, am I right? 
Ah, uh, okay. somebody is discussing email tracing. If yes. somebody is showing the demonstration, you can show that the public IP, how they can, private IP also can be seen in that okay. tracing. Fine, sir. So Fine, sir. you can do that. There are other methodologies also there. You, nowadays, there is a stun voice over IP call also. We can see that private IP addresses NAT, behind the NAT. Network address translation. So because your public IP translating your information of your private IP is to connect internet. To identify this NAT, there are tools are available. In case of the email tracing, when you are learning, you definitely you can learn these things. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Okay. And uh, yeah, one more question, sir. Yeah, please. Uh, uh, do business officers understand the cybersecurity risk uh, risks they are accepting? So see. Risk accepting, risk avoiding, risk uh, management is the part of any business activity. They need to understand about their activities. Uh, what exactly? Because it's not like that you cannot uh, detach the cyber security with uh, whatever your business activities. Every business mission, business is now part of cyber. Uh, the cyber uh, devices are part of every kind of business so that you cannot uh, detach these things. You need to understand what kind of threats. Based on threats, you have to calculate your risk. Sometimes your investment is required more than what exactly uh, you are uh, investing. Like uh, let's say uh, you are investing for uh, releasing some product, 10 rupees. For security, 100 rupees spending is very difficult. Am I right? The 10 rupees, if you wanted to give the security, for one rupee, you can make the product 11 rupees rather than making an 110 rupees. So at that time, what happens? So you have to accept the risk because for 10 rupees, securing the 10 rupees thing, you cannot spend 100 rupees. Let go 10 rupees, monitor the 10 rupees continuously so that so nobody takes that 10 rupees. But securing the 10 rupees amount, investing 100 rupees for security is not right. So every business person should work as in a risk calculation, risk management, and uh, attach with the business and do the things. Okay. Now coming to the cyber safety, you understand understanding between the cyber safety, cyber security, and information cyber in security and all. <clears throat> oh, Miss Pranita Chaudhary is uh, raising some questions. I will answer after this uh, this one. Cyber safety is the safe and responsible use of information and communication technology. Cyber safety, we define that whatever you are using, see you are using a mobile, a computer, or anything that cyber. Cyber is nothing but it could be a device, it could be a communication and all. Information maybe is there only here about that cyber devices. But anything you are using cyber, whether it's even including mobile, should be safe by using in the responsible way. That information could not be leaked through your mobile or could not be exposed through your mobile to anybody. Because the mobile you says there is a communication technology, there is a SMS, there is a WhatsApp, there is a kind of so many apps are there. If somebody is installed apps, third party installed apps, and collecting the SMS where you have sent password to your boss through SMS by thinking that SMS is mechanism, email is another mechanism. Document you forwarded uh, through email, password you forwarded through SMS. But whatever your both are done at mobile, one app is collecting the data from your SMS and email also. So they know each other. So that's what cyber safety is stems as that when you are using this technology, when using this communication, you should use it in the safe way and a responsible manner. That means keeping information safe and secure is nothing but cyber security safety. And being responsible, being responsible with that information and being respectful of other people online. Let's take example. You installed a true caller and you saved 200, 300, 500 members' details with their names. Okay, then true caller is collecting this database and keeping it to the mind. And if somebody is, suppose, let's say, uh, my number is in your list, 
now i am calling to the unknown member he also installed uh, true caller so that this database because of you installed it, my name as a murthy cdac so that guy whomever unknown person also knows about that murthy cdac is calling him that means even the first time i am calling he is saying that hello sir how are you mr murthy he said then i am a little bit surprised how he knows about me so first time i have taken somebody even he doesn't know about that so he is because of simply seeing in the true caller he is identifying me but 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 i never shared my details in true caller you are shared because you are my friend because my details are there with you so you shared to true caller true caller is sharing across all members of india which is again chinese company and our data with names they have so that's what why i am saying that so better not to install such application where it gives somebody's information without uh, uh, taking concern their concern so that is not is a respectable way of using the mobile so understand the app how the app would be sharing the information of your personal information and whether the your personal information is authenticated or non authenticated so let's say you are noted down your boss number like within a galia so what happens so that is what you understand so we need to follow some internet ethics so whatever the things for making ourselves as a responsible of using the information within a more responsible way respectable way and following ethics is nothing but cyber safety it is always tells about that how to use properly that cyber things it could be internet of things internet of things also part of cyber it could be anything of which is using by cyber is uh, and using within a, a proper internet etiquette so that it we can call it as in a cyber safety what is that cyber versus internet safety cyber is relating to our characteristics of the culture of computers information technology communication virtual reality etc whatever you are using as a device so now we are all sitting at different places across india and we are all virtually connected this is what called cyber we are using computers mobiles and a kind of an a communication technology internet is a global computer network we may be a part of cyber is a part of internet but internet is also by default as a cyber a global computer network providing a variety of communication facilities interconnected networks protocols etc sir internet is a kind of you know, services cyber services of the various communication facilities interconnected networks protocols the online is controlled by connected to a computer so online basically when you are suppose let's say you remove entire your gateway wifi router only you want to establish your home so you are fully private once you connected control uh, connected to internet you are becoming automatically part of online now why how it is cyber safety is different with cyber security cyber security means protecting data and information networks that means it uses further the technology for securing it ict products when a human being is introduced using the technology is maybe cyber safety for with respect to technology but if you are considering that securing the cyber itself and as a like a pre a proactive measure or preventive maintenance measure if you are trying to secure the products which we called as a cyber security so the cyber safety means protecting the users from harmful online content but hosting such kind of online content what devices you are using or protecting such kind of devices is will come under cyber security so it's like a people versus technology when more on technology we called it as a cyber security when more people are involving with this uh, cyber devices we called as a uh, cyber safety so when compared to information security versus cyber security information security is a super set of all including cyber security whether you wanted to product a cyber things 
or when you want to use in proper way of the cyber things that information is very important if information is flowing like anything everybody knows that what kind of device you are using what kind of operating system you are using so this information is very important so you need to control that information so that that's what information security is super set of cyber security or cyber safety domains information is everywhere so that's what we need to control this information just type your google your name so what kind of information is coming is that you only entered or somebody is entered so that you will understand how information is flowing you may be entering It's the 13 hours you may be uh, giving the information freely in your uh, social media accounts or you may be sharing a lot of information through whatsapp in further they were sharing to an another media because facebook and uh, whatsapp shares each other cyber devices are also plays a great role in terms of information stories and information flow here is very important how many of you believe that whatsapp is end to end secure devices and and you know that end to end security means it's very well secured plan but how many of you believe that government is monitoring your whatsapp communication if anybody is wanted to answer or chat with me just i request mr jagdish babu to enable them to talk to with respect to this question anyone ready i think alok singh okay alok yes what's up bhai hello ji alok singh uh, one okay. minute sir one minute sir one minute sir yes sir uh, alok ji i have un unmuted you please go ahead sir Please, 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 that is what my uh, in several cases it, it has been seen yes sir government is be, you believe that government is monitoring you closely uh, <laughs> i am not sure because in other in one hand whatsapp is saying that is it is uh, it is one to uh, end to end encrypted so yes. no one can no one can see my messages except okay. the receiver whom i am sending the messages good thing so you know that two things that whatsapp is claiming end to end encrypted means whatever you are sending the communication from your mobile based yes, on sir. that whom you are sending that particular yeah. number they were taking and based on that they were encrypting and forwarding the message to that mobile itself even yes, if there is a group the already group of numbers are there randomly it will create it so that when you typing some messages in the group to everybody it will be sending an end to end encryption in between how government can collect there are almost 25 about 25 crore whatsapp mobiles are there in india mm -hmm. 25 crore mobiles data how they will monitor it and where they store it and how they identify you that because this is going to mobile to mobile as per the whatsapp uh, claiming is that they never store any data they never uh, uh, store any keys of your mobiles at their place it is very difficult uh, to store such kind of data because you see that as an individual what are the things you are getting and what are the things you are forwarding minimum yes sir so, good evening minimum 1 mb 2 mb or 5 mb an average it would be there like 25 yeah, yeah. crore into 5 mb data an average yes, it is very yes, difficult to store the place and monitor the place so people has to understand end to end communication is only on data on move data on move means data when leaving your mobile 
and whomever the target mobile receiving that would be encrypted data is not encrypted at data at rest that means when the data is in your mobile it is not encrypted am i right yes sir yes so if you can ask that then how government of india are claiming the legal enforcement agencies if anybody is compliant or anybody feels that uncomfortable with the messages when the messages are coming they claim entire their mobile or other side of mobile and they will see that and they also sometimes what happens either if you are not giving the receiver message what you have sent it would be there okay so because of that they are easily identifying me that second thing once we identified about you both victims in particular case what we do that we will all look into that about where exactly your store is cloud storage so you may be taking backup into google so whatsapp data when it is going to your google is not encrypted again so whatever you have sent automatic backup can be retrieved from your google accounts and can take the necessary actions whether you confirmly sent or not until somebody complains these things are happened however somebody is also raised a type of message which i got some flash sir what where... is sir i will uh, uh, maybe mr uh, uh, sanjeev sugatham you can explain like what is that you wanted to uh, because i have unmuted you sir you can just uh, uh, say like what is that you wanted to say yeah please mr sanjeev sanjeev sugathan i have unmuted you you please say like what is that you wanted to say okay uh, i am not having a mic now <laughs> okay okay sir okay this, this is what you need to understand uh, backup when the backup you are taking where you are taking backup in your local system that means mobile or uh, you are taking into a cloud these are the sources to find you what exactly the communication you are forwarding of course uh, the metadata is very important metadata means who is sending what whether you are sent any communication this is collected by government so because to understand tomorrow if anything happens so whether you send at that time or not metadata is means so the data when you are transferring from your computer to other computer isp level they will so and so computer is connected internet with so and so ip address for this particular time so and so mobile is connected this much internet they were used so during that time they can't see the entire data is encrypted so they may not see that what exactly you are data is sending but what kind of applications if it is uh, even the whatsapp they cannot see that uh, of course but with some respectable keys and and they can identify that there could be possibility of whatsapp communication skype communication is happening that way they can retrieve the data and they all can be used as a secondary evidences so there is basically uh, the in the cyber crime investigation and lies would be using in that way so it is very important information storage and information flow you need to understand and how they were talking each other how to control this information with respect to that particular thing some information which is not part of cyber device is also important to protect from cyber attacks so maybe i am using mac computer is also uh, uh, information but actually i may not uh, use or not use it but uh, keeping that information is very important even my ghar mein 3 lakh rupees ka worth gold hai this information goes outside what happens and i went to on tour and you will keep uh, uh, facebook mein hamara photo andaman island mein ltc leke ghum rahe and at the same time mera ghar mein uh, 2 lakh worth gold hai ye dono information map karke so that that whoever thief can come and attack into my house same computers may be i say ho sakta hai so information you go enjoy your tour ltc and come back then only host the photos so that that would be the better information rather than if you are giving the information public to even unknown members because facebook means book of book book of friends friends of friends but how many friends are reliable we don't know so only 
because of 10 friends 10 friends are having another 10 into 10 100 friends are part of your uh, facebook but uh, you only you can trust 10 friends only the remaining 10 friends 10 into multiple friends you don't know directly so this can happen this information can forward by knowingly unknowingly by friends itself so that by giving thumbs up and all so that by being a government officers we should control some information what to post what not to post in the social media so cyber attacks and data breaches a cyber attack occurs when cyber criminals cyber criminals try to gain illegal access to electronic data stored on a computer or a network so any computer if something is illegally collecting the information from that computer we can call it as an attack the intent might be uh, to inflict reputational damage see it's not like only collecting the data aapka computer mein kuch data nahi hai kuch data bhi nahi chahiye musko lekin aapka damage as a person i want to your reputation um, make it as a damage so that uh, on behalf of you i can send filthy messages from your computer to somebody so such things also can be done this is also called in a kind of one type of attack in the cyber and a data breach is a type of a security incident the attack somebody is stealing and somebody is uh, morphing and somebody is changing these are the in your computer or somebody using your computer to make you reputational damage that is called cyber attack but data breach is the type of an security incident it occurs when information is accessed without your authorization because your computer web server is there web server is given to the public but your database server is not all purpose all pu all public database is only control manner who registered with you and only specific records so let's say i registered with specific records and trying to access different records of your database could be called or could be treated as an a data breach so that is what different you have to understand a data breach could be an attack but attack could not be as a data breach attack could be anything the information access it could include personal information such as aadhar numbers passwords and financial account numbers anything could be there suppose let's say in your organization you are saying all fingerprints by using third party uh, biometric devices if somebody is accessing entire your database of your thumb your uh, prints of biometric prints and entirely taking away is called as a data breach the chance which you are giving to access these things to unidentified this is called as an attack and if the breach that using the database uh, and using for other purpose is called as an a data breach yes a cyber attack often happens past a data breach might fall so always to get to do some data breach the cyber attack should follow uh, happen past then data breach will follow without attack you cannot breach if it is breach is happen that owner itself is doing the breach without any attack so both incidents can have an impact on you whether it is attack or breach so impact would be definitely to you your organization only so who is using your security you always you have to take care of who, who is using your user accounts somebody may be using for fun somebody may be for uh, students or even though uh, if you are teaching a uh, online class nowadays online classes are going on no students may fun may try to access your accounts and if your colleagues may i try to access what they do after accessing they could read your personal emails they can change their own online homework assignments just generally we discussed about that uh, online classes so so this is one of the mobile type different attacks what do your devices know about your devices knows your passwords credit card numbers social security numbers of course somebody will discuss more on this if you have any some more questions here i'll take up because uh, there is only 10 minutes are there for closing even though i didn't cover some of the slides whatever the time but very i'm very thankful to all members who are uh, uh, patiently listening to me but however i can take some questions because uh, i'm seeing some messages are flowing so that i would like to uh, answer some of the questions in the remaining time yes sir yeah. 
uh, what is the difference between a root kit and sniffer root kit and sniffer sir sniffer so sniffer is a snipping the data uh, snipping the data in the sense uh, basically uh, so let's say uh, as a third party member uh, like two people are talking to each other as a between third party member i am trying to uh, basically uh, understand what they are communicating each other what data they are transferring each other i am snipping the entire data for third this is called as a passive attack where i am trying to collect the data whether it is required or not required china is established an organization to collect such data across all mncs and the internet so that they were collecting huge data data so that the data could be useful in the future sense and understanding the basically uh, their uh, uh, what you can say that uh, their uh, behavior using in computers network so that in case tomorrow any kind of cyber war comes they can easily use it that's what china is collecting as much as uh, data uh, this is called snipping the data without knowing the uh, particular members where it is a root kit root kits are used in a different mode attacker also uses root kit and i also uses root kit to understand to uh, like in a, it's a basically to do some of the my activities it's like a bot so that is what major difference between um, a snipping data and root kit of the data the root kits would be used for the clearing my logs whatever the things i am coming uh, attacker is a, uh, entering into in a particular target all my footprints it can be deleted by on behalf of myself or root kit can become as an a bot and uh, it uh, receives uh, my commands and do my activity so it, it is uh, like an uh, active also sometimes it comes under active based attack where snipping is mostly passive attack is silently stealthy way it is collects the data okay sir uh, spoofing is illegal or not sir so nothing like any attack is not legal okay you are spoofing somebody is is illegal if you are proving if you are submitting somebody's documents and taking loan is not legal the same way here also spoofing spoofing is not at all legal it is illegal okay sir and uh... what bankers are doing to protect customers details yeah so bankers is uh, basically uh, try to see it's like an uh, what how can we say that is identity access management trustworthy and privacy these are the things we they try to implement across banking system identity management is that what who are you how you related with bank what kind of type of accounts are there either it is a, like in a premier account or is a normal savings account based on that segregation they try to keep the data as much as they predict so banks will take the respective controls not to reveal any kind of a breach with respect to your personal information in such a way that they created a policies procedures and regular audits will happen how the data is flowing across the uh, uh, networks and every year they will try to do this account auditing and assessment in such a way that they try to protect some of the banks never give direct access through web they use vpn softwares either you take maharashtra bank bank of india they will give some kind of any vpn solution star connect maha connect such kind of vpn solutions where Uh, you need to use vpn that means the computer which you installed they identify your uh, identity by that software or your computer also and make a kind of a trust so that the trust management would be implemented so that you are only the connecting some banks further based on the activities so they make uh, some extra control so suppose let's say otp along with the password the otp uh, is one of the other second level authentication like two way authentication three way authentication they believe somebody may be using a like an 
a token uh, every 40 uh, when you press it for 30 seconds the token would be there in their server also the token same token number will be there along with your user id id your otp the token number when three are being you are giving then only that thing will be accessed so uh, in that way they try to secure their data communication and all and of course the necessary uh, security uh, cyber security over that databases and all they continually implement the advanced technologies and regularly they do audit and assessment activities understanding the gap areas vulnerabilities in case they are not able to cover how continuously needs to monitor they implementing like a security operation centers seems all these things they will be implemented to secure your data is yes, a last question sir that's what yes, hmm? yeah please go ahead sir please go ahead sir yeah attackers then, then attackers cannot attack banks directly so they try to attack an individual by spoofing their websites uh, they give like in a uh, spoofed website like icic bank ic1 ic bank dot com so that if you feel like look like uh, somebody will discuss about the phishing attacks how they will do in general how they try to collect your individual person individual otps yes sir second so hackers and attackers modify dns server data yes uh, this is a possible <laughs> so basically if your organization hosting your dns own dns server that is one of the way to filter the data let's say if you are trying to access the www.sex.gov when it is coming to dns server they will write www.sex.com this is the ip address that ip address could be your website your organization website even if you are trying www.sex.com your website only will come so they are able to modify in that way by hosting dns server somewhere this gnd root dns servers are there 13 root dns servers so initially initial or even though the dnssec protocol before dnssec protocol everybody can change this so that um, there are a lot of miss things like if i know that when i registered my website and uh, i am able to change the ip address so Uh, whoever accessing that website that website will go to that particular ip address so to avoid this now they were using some kind of uh, authentication methods and uh, implemented dns protocols so that they controlling such kind of activity now we can say that at this moment uh, uh, dns could be secured through dns sec protocol okay yes sir and uh, i have Hello. unmuted mr uh, bahad ddk uh, dd ks b a h a d sir you have uh, you are uh, excuse me for unmute can you please talk b a h d b a h d d d d y k e s hello sir yeah please go ahead sir like you have some question just 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 a small question maybe it's related or not sir sir murthy yes sir please it's just suppose now i am using a, a very good antivirus but uh, somehow it's expired and i want to change it to a new other company another brand of antivirus yes so when i do changing do i need to uninstall the old uh, antivirus or i i can install the new company antivirus and then uninstall the old one see basically some antivirus won't accept that the previous antivirus they request themselves this uh, already you install this antivirus uh, uninstall that antivirus first so that you can install this antivirus that way you will get messages some antivirus treat as in a different application like any other application they will install it because of the engine should be installed engine should be uh, same port if it is taking there would be a port conflict will come but that uh, if some softwares can take different port and they can install it also but however uh, it is always better uninstall previous one when anything is not updated antivirus is useless rather than giving the information because all these products they will collect whatever the information from your computer they learn from your computer suppose if you got some 
uh, malware which that antivirus might have cleaned so that is where that understand that this kind of malware came this malware antivirus is cleaned that data goes automatically when they try to update they send the information also what the last week what kind of files are there uh, these are how, how many files are cleaned all these things information will flow we cannot control it only we have to trust some antivirus so that whomever you are trusting is better uh, that trusted softwares only should be useful the all remaining software should be uninstalled so here is good question uh, from you uh, i always say that uh, you don't continue same software continuously you evaluate two or three softwares best software and one more thing is that we cannot say any antivirus is the best antivirus so because of that whom these are all signature based there is a virus program so there is an anti reverse engineering program should be required for to clean that virus so based on the number of signatures you are developing on daily with respect to daily what you are getting so you can tell it as a, a better antivirus so there are 6000 which of the antivirus is working 6000 viruses is the better antivirus on that day today maybe cementec tomorrow maybe some other antivirus i always request if it is individual purpose you also check uh, some open source based antivirus where they are also uh, gives good support and you can believe that and uh, second thing is that for windows when it is coming see windows is uh, registry is very important if you know the registry suppose in case if an antivirus is uh, troubling you you can go to that registry and clean that anti uh, viruses without using any antivirus package also these are the some of the techniques uh, you will try to learn uh, slowly uh, maybe you better use our e learning program to so continuous training evaluation as it is a free and you also get in a kind of in a uh, master trainer master uh, in the cyber security awareness yes sir because yes, sir. Uh, what happens is that after installing the old antivirus suppose it accepts to uninstall uh, i'm worried because while installing the new antivirus sometimes we have to you know we have to have the data internet internet should be switched on so during that time i'm during the time when the all antivirus has already been uninstalled so maybe there could be at that period oh, when the but any which you are installing new antivirus is entering the computer yeah so will the defect of uh, file about that see uh, basically when you old, uh, whatever the old antivirus which you are already there it's already expired when it is expired what you are all exposed to that new viruses new threats so you should not worry about the old virus you can install it and when you install new virus with the latest updates and make run entire computer once again so that without using your computer without opening any files you try to clean everything then you start using it happens you don't worry about that gap area before uninstalling and installing you should not worry so because you are on, when you are installing new antivirus you are installing with new updates which can clean entire things even though if it is exposed to some virus it can be cleaned until then you don't use any applications once you install new antivirus new packages scan entire computer then start using yeah, any the desk app is, is the safe or not sir any desk app is safe or not any the, the, any the, desk any desk is a kind of a remote software which you are to access entire remote uh, work uh, workstation that it is like that you are given the access to anybody to access your files and uh, you don't know the sometimes you are only for needy you are given but if you are continuously using that somebody can if they know that uh, the key and all they can access some third party also can access the same because of the using the vulnerabilities in particular any desk software so i request you to better not to install such kind of softwares and if you wanted to use software you give the some kind of an open source based uh, vpn kind of access to control or to access your computer only the known to people that software you have to install and you can tell any desk is like you can access everything on everything like in a desktop how you are accessing it uh, in front of you 
uh, but vpn is you can give the control to only one folder so that you can do the things that is where you can manage so it is not recommendable to use any days and in particularly in mobile operating systems and all uh, basically the, they can see that all activities your uh, otp messages and all so it is not recommendable to install until you have a kind of a trusted member is accessing you just install it access it continuously look into that what are the things is looking into that and immediately once work is over you may please uninstall it uh, thank you sir for the our free version of antivirus thank you i am mr Pardeman from all thank india thank you very much sir uh, what is that next question uh, sir last question how effective are free version of uh, free versions of antivirus see pre rather than saying pre see like you take abc free avast pre edition this is one year edition for individuals to market rather than they are investing the money uh, the advertising they were giving to the individual to make themselves as uh, popular so these are like uh, same whatever the license that were taken they are also updates on everybody every day so uh, here point is that you have to update the data and you have to uh, update every day and clean clean or scan your computer alert from system so like, uh, low battery uh, it is like working like in any commercial software open alert the software from also low battery one minute i have to make power on okay so anything any open source based antivirus also is like uh, that entire open source group is supporting to develop design if you are taking a company vendors one vendor you should update it but uh, the open source softwares there is a community group across globe is supporting uh, if you have any doubts you can pose the question and they will also is working so it's uh, like uh, any uh, commercial edition it works of course maybe some of the updates would be delayed but however uh, they are all working like in a same as any commercial editions okay okay sir yeah a firewall uh, we will discuss tomorrow sir yeah tell me sir like you have any other uh, uh, thing to to be answered no uh, firewall how can firewall attack be avoided what is why this question i would like to know that no no tomorrow we will uh, deal with sir you know to uh, firewall we are going to discuss tomorrow we will uh, deal with that so once again uh, i thank each and everybody whoever is a part of uh, this lecture so however maybe you can use uh, uh, our e learning system also to continually learning process of this cyber security awareness thank you very much for giving opportunity uh, to meet all of you and discuss with you okay. and i may be reached at uh, chasmurty at the rate of cdac.in if you have any questions or you also can mail to isca at cdac.in thank you very much thank you sir thank you to sir and all the attendees participants we will meet again tomorrow morning thank you sir uh, tomorrow we will start the session exactly by 10:30 and uh, you all can join and uh, tomorrow morning i hope like most of the people are there in the whatsapp group so if everyone is there in the whatsapp group because the whatsapp group members are more than the registered members so tomorrow morning we will keep a, a, a session link so you, you all can join by using the session link okay okay all right sir thank you thank you so thank much you, thank you muti sir thank you thank you thank you sir thank you bye Thank you to everybody. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone. We'll see you tomorrow. Yes. Bye bye.